nothing to brag about. There's our passion as far as the rest of the Woo! It's coming! You... Flash in the box, we're on your hand. <coughs> Are we rolling? Yeah. Welcome. Right, Welcome to another edition of the High Spots <coughs> interview series. We are here with a conversation with Smoke my eyes. Brian Kendrick and Paul London. Guys, thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Uh, I guess the logical place to start, uh, how and where did you guys meet? <coughs> we met in uh, California, actually. Um, we both trying to make our way to the Indies. Um, Paul came from Texas, um, but from Texas. I was from Washington, moved to Texas, and oddly enough, we fucking wound up in California with the same pursuit of making it uh, in professional wrestling. Yeah, it was, um, I think it's just like, anyone that pursues wrestling, you have to get out of your home niche for a while, you know? And so, I had been in Texas for a while, and I was familiar with Brian and his work, um, and I admired it, you know, not to make you feel weird, but so I, I was like, well, California might be the place to go. So I went out to UPW because I was under the belief that it was yeah, opening to Japan, a developmental WWE. deal. Yeah, they had a developmental mm -hmm. deal for a while, UPW, and I went out there, and they told me they were still under the contract, which turned out not to be true. <laughs> but uh, anyways, I went out to California, and soon enough we ended up meeting up. This is probably around 2001. I see. Yeah, and uh, we just hit it off, you know, we made fun of the same things and just kind of had the same drive and, uh, you know, like minds. And so I think we knew that we were both kind of serious about it. And there's, a, you know, there's an attraction there. There's friends, you know, where you're like, I want to be, I want to be surrounded. And, and even to this day, I like to surround myself with people who I think are quality human beings that challenge themselves, have, you know, they have aspirations. They're not just lugs who sit around and and are just content, you know, to pick up welfare checks or whatever, like, whatever it might be. I don't know. Uh, but just people who are lazy and don't push themselves, but that's the opposite with him. And so that was, there was an attraction there. I felt like I could really learn something from him. So he's a hell of a friend. So it's been a really good uh, engagement. We're not engaged. <laughs> Did you find at that point you had had a lot of the same experiences coming up in Texas with around a lot of the same people, or did you not really cross paths with as many of the same people as we would think? You know, a, a few of the same people. Um, Rudy Boy was instrumental in, in helping us both out. Yeah. Uh, Rudy Boy Gonzalez, who, fuck, I mean, um, when I signed up for Sean's class, it was uh, 9 to noon, Tuesday through Thursday. Uh, Rudy was there Monday through Saturday, um, as long as I want him, and I'd show up an hour and a half early, and he'd stay three hours late, and it's just because he likes wrestling, and this is what he can do to get back to wrestling. So, um, Rudy Boy was our, our definitely our biggest connection, um, yeah. and uh, fuck, years later, um, I wind up squeaking out a TV deal. Paul gets some gets some dark matches and knocks the fucking socks off everybody with his match with Saturn, has a match with, match with Matt Hardy, and, oh, yeah. and they say fucking hire the guy. And, uh, and I went to, to Johnny, I went to Stephanie, and said I want him as my tag team partner. And politicking, that's how yeah, it works. Well, no, I'm kidding. Well, <laughs> I never <laughs> stroke, I never <laughs> stroke, but I said I'm doing nothing, please. And sure, we'll put you on the internet bullshit show. And they did. And here we are, smoking tobacco. And, yeah, I will say, if you remember the Shawn Michaels uh, vignettes at WrestleMania 12 when he was going towards the Ironman match, he's warming up and working out in San Antonio with like those uh, all those Mexican luchador guys. Rudy, we call him Bumblebee, he's the one wearing the yellow and black stripes. He says it's not him. He insists it's not him. It's him. Sure. <coughs> well, he, he was really instrumental in training me as well, because I trained at Ivan Putsky's school. He's who broke me originally at Ivan Putsky. And, you know, he's just a big strong man with <coughs> his gimmick. Uh, Popping basketball. Do you know he used to put a basketball here and he'd squeeze his bicep and he would pop the basketball? Legitimately? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He would break uh, no wrestling. baseball bats and stuff like that. So he was a strong man, but that, I guess that limits you when it comes to psychology. So when I went to uh, Sean's, which is the big thing, he trained at Sean's. Like, I trained at the school <coughs> that Sean ran, but Rudy was the guy doing all the physical work when I was there, and I worked with Rudy directly. He's the one that 
really put a, an idea in my head about how psychology is supposed to go. It's a misconception. We, ne we never knew each other in, in Texas. We met in California. Yep. Which is Years funny because we live like 20 minutes from each other now in California. And we <laughs> hang out and go to movies and comes over and my wife makes dinner and yeah, it's awesome. Out. Yeah, it's, it's great. Yeah. Funny how life works. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, she's a keeper. <coughs> uh, Paul mentioned this also as far as you ending up in California, but for both of you, how critical was it to travel and to get exposure? Brian, you especially <coughs> went from Washington to Texas to Memphis to Cincinnati <coughs> to California. Paul also went all over the country. How crucial was that to, to getting your name out and getting exposure? I guess the... Um, I guess like my biggest uh, travel story claim to fame would be uh, uh, there's this dude Mikey Henderson supposed to go to zero one. Uh, Great look. Yeah, he's he's about 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 our height, maybe even a little shorter, but Jack, real talented. But I had a wife and kids, and it was not too long after 9/11, World War Three, World War Three. Fuck, I ain't afraid of it. I'll t I'll take the booking, man. But I was living in Cincinnati. Uh, I moved out there uh, from California to learn from Benoit, who was coming back from uh, his neck surgery. Um, but I'd spent time in California trying to get to Japan. Mikey said, you want to take the booking? Uh, they talked to the office, and I had to be out there to wrestle three matches in like 40 fucking hours. So I bought myself some protein, uh, some gallons of water, took protein to stay awake, would jerk off to stay awake, <laughs> and, and eventually at like the 30 hour mark, I, I started to make myself puke to stay away. Got to a friend's house, took a shower, wrestled three matches, but it got my foot in the door in Japan, Japan got me to WWE, and that got me sitting here next to Paul and with you guys right now. And that was something that always stood out to me, because when I lived in California, keep in mind, the UPW Training Center and where we ran shows was in Santa Ana. I lived in Buena Park, and then I moved to Garden Grove, all within about 10, 15 miles of Santa Ana. Brian lived in Rancho Cucamonga, which is like a good 45 minutes to an hour and a well, half. Yeah, at night time, yeah. At night but time. still, it it's way the fuck out there in the middle of nowhere. Out. And he's living on his buddy's floor. Uh, this is post WWE developmental contract, right? So he'd already done more than I had at this point. Um, so my respect for him really developed, I think, by watching how hard this person worked. I think that's what contributed to my work ethic as far as like, boy, this guy's you know, he was there already, and, and the fact, you know, and he's not, but he's not acting like he isn't. He's working his ass off because he knows he's going to be back. And, you know, and it was just, it was a pleasure for me to see him grow, but to also learn from him and to learn those techniques. Like, and I knew how essential it was to travel. I knew that that was a big deal. Because I'd seen all these dipshits in Texas who were just like, I'm the fucking man in Dallas. I'm like, who gives a fuck? Nobody even knows who you are, and you still wrestle like shit. And, Guys just had excuses to not travel. They had excuses to not go anywhere. And they had excuses for why their careers never developed. And it was like, well, if all you have is excuses, what do you expect? You can't expect results. Oops, sorry. It's Butterfingers. And uh, so everyone, at least my peers at the time, Lance Hoy was another guy that I started up with who eventually listened and was like, I need to get out of Texas. Uh, but he was somebody who I kept pushing, like, you need to get the fuck out of here, man, because Texas has become stagnant, and it's become oversaturated, like many states have. they become oversaturated, where there's like 40 promotions, and some are up for a week, and then they're gone, and then, you know, and, and they just, you know, they put 40 kids on their match, on their shows that, you know, have never even been trained, and, and so the business just gets oversaturated. And so it's only wise to get out of your element, to get out of your comfort zones and travel around. And for me, it was a matter of getting to the Northeast at one point after the developmental, the, the, it turned out UPW didn't have developmental. I was like, well, I need to get to the Northeast. That's where the main <coughs> exposure is. That's where apparently the, the, the biggest uh, rated matches are at. You know, that's where the matches people are talking about, Ring of Honor, you know, even CCW at a time. I was booked for them at one point, but that fell through. But it was just, you know, these are the higher level promotions. So why wouldn't I want to go there? I don't care if I have to drive 30 hours for no money. I mean, traveling is essential. They're not going to come to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you, they're not, they're not going to come to you. And really, I, I don't know if we're really actually moving. You know what I mean? It's either me sitting on the couch for 30 hours 
I'll well, be doing this for 30 hours, but I'm fucking staying in one goddamn place. My feet might be moving. You know what I mean? Cruise fucking, control? Yeah, fucking, yeah, fucking get off your ass and do it. You know what I mean? Uh, I, uh, we did it. You know, we did it. I, I, it's not taking, it's taking no... I, for an answer. You're not going to take no for an answer. Because I'm sure that's, all you that's heard... That's what it is. Not take no for an answer. answer. I will say Brian, what, what are you doing? You're too small, man. You're not going to make it. What are you fucking doing? Mm-hmm. You're going to get broken in half. You're, you're stupid. What are you thinking, man? You pro wrestling? What do you think? No, 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 no. How many, how many no's did you get compared yeah. to the yeses? Um, yeah, I, you're going to make it. I know you're going to make I, it. You're going to be a big star. I know you are. How many of those did you get? Dude, I, I had my mom saying, go for it. Yeah. That, yeah my you know, mom, go for yeah, it. Yeah, my mom was saying and, that. And, and, and me saying... Fuck everybody. I know I And that was the difference. I, I don't I'm, I i do not know. Uh, no, that is the difference. Because most people don't have that. Most people think, oh, well, I'm pretty, or oh, I'm more attractive, or oh, I used to be an athlete, or this or that. And while a lot of those things do contribute, I really do think, and I, and growing up, you know, my, my tastes changed as far as who I admired for different reasons as I became more aware of the wrestling business and kind of smartened up to it a little bit. Um, but I specifically remember reading a Rob Van Dam interview in a Pro Wrestling Illustrated, and he said, I always knew that I would make it. I always had that belief in myself, and it was key. And I thought, I was like, well, I've always pictured myself being there. I've always believed I could make it. There's no reason. And I look, and I'm like, I'm taller than some of these guys, you know? and. It was just not taking no for an answer. You know, it's just having that drive and not, not settling. Too many people settle. They get successful in their town, and that's good enough. And, and, and maybe that's good enough for them, and I feel good for them. Good for them. Happy. Great. My aspirations are higher. I mean, that's just the way it is. I don't see the point in getting into wrestling if your goal isn't to make it to one of the top companies. It's just like, you know, I want to get into the NBA just because I want to say I'm an NBA player. No, I, I want to get into the NBA because I want to win an NBA championship. Why not shoot for the top, right? And then I don't want to come off like we've... I mean, I... Dude, I'm not saying... I've got, a lot, I've got a lot left that I want to accomplish. I'm not saying that. But if you're saying what's the difference between making it from from the indies in one state to to the next level, it is it is going out there and, and chasing it and, and saying, yeah, I can do this. And it's confidence. That's all the difference, yeah. It's knowing... The confidence creates... You, you, you're your own product. If you know you've got the goods, and you know you put in the work, and you're continuing to put in the work, and you're just continuing to evolve and get better and better, and you have that drive, you can't lose in anything you do in life. I think that most people lack confidence in this world, to be honest with you. And that's what creates a lot of arguments, and, and fear, and divorce, and all sorts of problems. It's just lack of confidence and security, you know? What you got for us? It's funny how we went from travel to insecure. <laughs> you guys you know, travel, boy? Yeah, you know, insecure. <laughs> Where's Lee, by the way? That motherfucker. <laughs> this guy, you're battling. We talked about the travel. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Talk a little bit about experiences in Japan and internationally. Well, I'm sorry, I don't okay. mean to interrupt you for a second, but I didn't actually get to hit on this when we travel. Um, and I saw something, I mean, I knew that he was traveling from L.A. to Cincinnati. He drove from L.A. to Cincinnati just because he had an opportunity to try out for a company that might get him to Japan. It wasn't a guarantee. It wasn't a, hey, come sign this paper. It was just an opportunity. He drove from L.A. to Cincinnati. Like that, okay, I'll do it tomorrow. It was like on a drop of, it was pretty yeah. short notice, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, who's going to do that? No one's going to do that most of the time anyways with like three months advance notice, but on last second, no way. But he, you know, he did it and it was like, fuck, it was just another example. It was like, that's a sacrifice, sacrifice. And so when I was thinking about it, we were in San Antonio, you know, we were driving from San Antonio to Philadelphia. It's like a 60 hour round trip. Rudy, again, sticking out for his guys, looking out for his guys that he trained and that he believed in, was like, hey guys, I'm gonna rent this van Let's hop in the van. We're gonna go up to this company. Got the guys booked on Ring, Ring of this Honor. new company, Ring of Honor, starting up, and uh, we think they're gonna do pretty big things. It's kind of like uh, not so much. It's some of the guys that work with ECW, and there's someone that have been influenced there. It wasn't like, hey, this is the next ECW. It wasn't anything like that. 
Uh, I think some people thought that, but it was something new, and it was a new opportunity. And so Rudy wanted his guys to be a part of it. To the point where he said, hey, we're gonna run a band. You guys pitch in what you can. Yeah, we worked up one more. And, uh, and we pitched in, and we took turns driving, except for Fast Eddie, because he's legally blind. I think it's a, it could work, though, fucking bastard. Um, and we drove up to Philadelphia, and we're doing of honor, and we're making, you know, no money. And we were losing money. And I was in school full time. So I was skipping class. Do you want to try? Brave man. Damn it. So, you know, it's sacrifice. Um, it's making not, it was more important in school. So the drive worked like out. It, it never felt like it to me. About? It never felt, it never felt like... Like, oh, three no, it hours didn't straight. feel like a sacrifice. It, it never did. No, it, it felt never, like, fuck, let's get yeah, there. Let's sure, show sure, sure. what we can do. Let's, yeah, let's... Oh, okay, I'm, I'm going here. Yeah. yeah Man, no, never, imagine yeah. the possibilities never, never that come out of this. Never did. You know? It's, uh, it's you know, uh, uphill both ways. You know, I don't fuck that. It's sitting in the What are they going to get us? Like What's in it for us? It's, like... it's, 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 no, it, it's not that hard. It, it's just, you, know, you just got to do it. And if you like it, it's, if you love it, it's a pleasure. Mm-hmm. Had some of the best times of my life just being on the road with friends, you know. I had nothing to do with the actual wrestling itself. That was just another bonus, you know. That enjoyment of the match, but you know, guys bitching on about being on the road. I found some of my most enjoyable moments in my life being on the road, you know. So it's camaraderie. It's a lot of things. Any in particular that come to mind thinking about them? Road stories from from <laughs> driving to Ring of Honor or driving wherever, trying to trying to catch a break. Uh, well, I mean, like, for example, we went, we were in San Antonio, uh, Rudy drove up to Austin, because I had driven to San Antonio, my transmission blew out, so I was like, fuck, what is this, like a sign, am I not supposed to get to San Antonio, we were already late, uh, there's green fluid all over my windshield, and I was like, fuck, I had to get my car towed, I was like halfway, I was in San Marcos, he drove up out of the way, because they were going to go a different way, he drove out of the way to come pick me up at a Bill Miller's barbecue, and uh, then we went and caught him. We tried to make up time. He drove fast as shit. Uh, so he made up time. And then we, we drove up through Nashville because we were picking up Michael Shane, who was living at uh, like Tracy's mother's house at the time. And then we went from, Louis, uh, from Nashville up to Cincinnati to pick Brian up. And it was just like this curvature thing. And Brian was staying, I think, at Lance's place. Yeah, and so, you know, all just trying to make it. And then we made our way over to, I think, Philly. Yeah. Philly. And, you know, we had separate matches and whatnot. We were, you know, but it was just, you know, it was like, and that just shows another thing about, as far as, like, Rudy was willing to do. He, that's, I mean, that's a weird, that's not a direct to Philly. What the fuck, you know? So, but that's, he knew the guys wanted it. And the guys, you know. That sounds like fun, though, doesn't it? Fuck it yeah, is, dude. It sounds like fun. I'd do it I again. Mean, <laughs> I mean, none of us were going to starve to death. None of us are going to freeze to death. We're all going to be okay. We're all on it together. We're all going to be okay. Yeah, we're all on it together. And we're going to go on an adventure. It, boy, it beats watching reruns. You know what I mean? And I love Seinfeld. And I've seen all the episodes a hundred times. But <laughs> really? Let's have seen them. Yeah, let's have seen 101, though. Man, let's, let's go on an adventure. Yeah. I mean, travel is such a perk. It's the best part of life. Yeah. Of this, of, of wrestling. It's such a perk. And if, you know, you don't have that mindset because, I mean, it's just, you gotta, I don't know. I love traveling. I took geography, a lot of geography classes too. I, like maps. I know you got maps. I know, I know. Yeah, it helps. Terry Funk time me that. Dude, there's these, there's these maps, right? Um, Topographic maps? No, 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 no. Of, of the, uh, of the land where, where that would be covered with, with the, uh, the snow in Antarctica. Uh, Dude, anyways, I, it's I'm, I'm been drinking. But I understand. What I'm what I'm saying is, if you like maps, I gotta show you these fucking old maps of where Atlantis was. It's fucking covered by snow. It's Antarctica. Is what I'm telling you. Maps. But it's current day. Or it's, it's current. No, 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 no. This is this is maps from a few hundred years ago. But it was still covered in fucking snow. I'll I'll show it to you. The videos will make more sense than I do. <laughs> it sounds awesome. It's awesome. Atlantis is Antarctica. Yeah. 
That's where the predator hideout was, or aliens. I didn't know yeah, that. The Irish predator, they go on this like Antarctic expedition. Does aliens fucking fly into the goddamn ice. hole in the bottom of, you know, yeah. They, they, they hide in ice. Hollow Earth. No, I mean, you can preserve specimens in ice. Oh. So it makes sense for them to go to the Antarctic. That makes sense, too. Okay. Anyways. How much did you... <laughs> It feels weird to go back to Ring of Honor after that. <laughs> Who the fuck was talking about Yard of Honor? Yeah. I mean, you can... You say Yard of Honor? I mean, Ring of Honor, Yard of Honor, Canada, check it out. Uh, the cheap plug for Yard of Honor. <laughs> I'm gonna we'll just talk about wrestling, but you can talk about aliens. Yeah. Hollow Earth. And the ice. Seriously, though. They're out there. The, the, the sun, I just found out recently, that it's, it's not hot. Okay, oh, now, now dig, dig this, right? <laughs> why, why do the mountains have, have snow on it? It, it, it when, when it's closer, let's say, if, if it's closer to the oven, that it is the sun. It would be melting quicker. Sure, and, yeah. and there'd be snow on the bottom. But the, the theory is, is that the photons aren't hot. It's the energy created when it hits the mass. And there's more mass down low, as opposed to up top where it's more of a peak. So it has less mass to interact with. Well, but no, but I think that also has something to do with the altitude, though, because it's hot. With the higher you go in altitude, the uh -huh. colder it gets. But why does it get colder? Because it's closer to the sun. Space is cold. Why is space cold? Why would no you freeze? Gravity. Why would you freeze going to the sun? Because you're not a big amount of mass, man. It's the photons reacting with the mass. The it's fucking, I, it's trippy, man. What, what the, what photons, you, what, is, what do we mean by photons? Photons are just little bullets of light. Little bullets of light come from the sun, little beads. Okay, but what about, what about sunburn? Yeah. Or sweat, when you're out at the beach. Sure. And you're getting, it's hot as fuck. Sure. Like, but if, now imagine if you were laying on the beach, and now you just floated up from the beach. 100 feet up into the air, 100 feet closer, right? You'd be colder. Why? You're closer to the sun now. Well, you're still on the, the beach. the water reflects the sunlight on it. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, check it out, man. It's the photons interacting with the matter. It's, it's It just creates this energy that creates heat. Yeah, the sun is well, fucking cold. The moon is cold as far we know the that. Moon, the moon, the is... moon is a space station. <laughs> Man. What I'm saying is the moon is hollow. It just so happens that Joey Sylvia gave me my book back from months ago. Wait a minute, I'm supposed to fight that and, guy and I swear this wasn't planned. Dark Mission, Secret oh, History of NASA by Richard C. Hoagland. And Mike Barra. Yeah, dude. It's a New York Times bestseller. It's a New York Times bestseller. Check it out, man. You it's a space it's station. Here. It's hollow. I will say, if you're ever in Los Angeles, Griffith Park Observatory is my favorite place in the world to go. How about how about those the 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 the, the uh, night vision goggles video I just showed you yesterday, before you came out here? Did you? The night vision goggles of the of the spaceships? Dude, you didn't show me that. I did. No, I swear you didn't. Show oh, I showed me. Brett. I, I showed Brett. I'm and sorry, Brett. Any, anyways, anyways, yeah, go uh, YouTube that UFO night vision goggles. Does so it look like that? Yeah. No, 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 no. That, not the UFOs. The reason I mentioned Griffith Park <laughs> is because they have this giant telescope. And when I first moved out to Los Angeles about a year and a half ago, I went out there and uh, they have this giant telescope. Griffith Park, they filmed uh, Rebel Without a Cause there. It's a really famous landmark in Los Angeles. But anyways, it's free. And uh, I went there and was able to check out the telescope, which they had fixed on the moon. I'm only bringing this, this may not even be the moon, but I'm just bringing it up. I could see the craters and everything on the moon. It was phenomenal. Like, it changed my life. It had such a profound effect on my life. Like, I felt, I mean, it was, in, it was incredible. Like, if a guy was on the moon waving at me, I could have seen him. That's how close this telescope was magnified on the moon. And it, and it was just, like, I felt so lucky, you know what I mean? Like, to be a part of the galaxy. That had something so incredible part of it. Cause your soul came from the fucking moon, man. Check oh. it out. Anyways, what do you got next? I, have, I know there's life there. It's awesome. Our yeah, life came from found there. water there. Yeah. Uh, uh, chronologically, we were chronologically we were in Ring of Honor before we went to outer space. Uh -huh. <laughs> <You're on. laughs> it's cold in this room. That's why we have our jackets on. Because uh, we're flashers. We might be.
I I've flashed a few people before. How important to both of your careers was Ring of Honor? What company? No. Uh, I'd say more important in a way on my end. Just, it really helped put me on the map. Whereas I think Brian was kind of already on the map a little bit. It just really enhanced him. That's my opinion. I was, well, I mean, I, I had a developmental deal, but I had done shit on the Indies. And that was the, uh, <clears throat> the first thing that got me out there, was Ring of Honor. Back uh, out there. Yeah, it gave me, you know, they gave me a chance. Uh, boy, I, you know, uh, I, I owe a lot to Gabe. Man, I don't know, I, I like Gabe a lot. You know, he's, it's fucking running a company, he's fucking driving him. It seems crazy, I don't know, but but uh, he's always been real good to me. And yeah, he, he helped uh, him him and uh, Hashimoto in Zero One, I think really gave my my two biggest breaks, for sure. Yeah, I think it was, uh, I actually went up there as a, a standby, um, but then I think, uh, if I remember correctly, a week or something before the show, the guy fell out, so I became the actual guy in the match. Um, but, uh, no, I, my first recollection is just going up there, doing this, like, 30-hour trip up to, you know, Philadelphia, and being really amped for it, and being like, oh, you know, we have this great opportunity to show these, this whole other kind of fan, you know, fan base, what we can do, and hopefully, you know, kind of get our names out there a bit more. And then, you know, we had this tag match, and I had this, Stupid acai moon salt idea, and 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 uh, so the match was over in like three minutes because I, you know, this guy's uh, Chris Marvel ended up catching me and his ankle snapped uh, in half, like like a clean break. It was a freak accident, um, but uh, it was just so amped to get up there, you know what I mean? And then three minutes and it's done. I was just it was like shock, and I felt so horrible that I hurt my friend, uh, even though you know it was it was. It was a fucking accident, you know? I mean, it's a risk. It's a high-risk sport when you're doing all this shit. It was a simple outside moonsault. He just happened to have his feet planted wrong, I guess, or in a weird position. Um, but, uh, yeah, they cut off his kick pads, and it was weird. It was a weird... But I was really... I was tripping out. I was just like, I felt... Just, like, it was just bad. But, uh, you know, a couple guys, a lot of guys actually in the locker room were actually real supportive, and they're like, don't... You know, don't let it get you down. It could happen to anybody. And so I remember that too. That that was one of the first experiences I'd had in the locker room, that was really supportive and like felt somewhat like a family. You know, you hear that a lot about oh, this locker room is a family, and, and that word gets tossed around so much. And we heard that word a lot when we were working for the entertainers. And you know, it was like, we're family guys. You gotta look out for each other. Like, <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? No, it's all a line of shit. Bunch anywhere, of bullshit. Any, anywhere you go, anywhere you go, like I said, I mean, I <clears throat> I owe a lot to Gabe, but then, you know, his, his company's been involved with lawsuits towards wrestlers, which I... I Dra that being Dragon, Dragon Gate. Dragon Gate, right yeah, currently. currently which, which just disgusts me. And, and I've talked with him, and, and, and uh, you know, it has nothing to do with anything, but fuck, it, you know, families, it's, it's a crock of shit. You know what I mean? It's it sounds nice, but uh, so are you supposed to stay in this family forever? You know, in North Carolina, am I not supposed to move up to that family? If that's a fucking family from that family, it's it's all bullshit. You know. Um, that's what I'm saying it's it gets tossed around so much. Yeah. But at the time, that was something that just felt like what I had understood a family to be in the locker room. Because guys were supportive, and everyone wanted the product to succeed, you know? Everyone was like, hey, this is all cool and upstart. And I think everyone was really excited to be a part of it, you know, except maybe Conan. Um, <laughs> I loved it, though, man. I loved it. I loved it. I did, too. I loved it. It was the highlight for me. And like I said, I was in college full-time, so I was, like, missing half a week of school at a time. I'll tell you what my grade was, but... It was, uh, you know, that was the highlight for me. It was getting up to Ring of Honor and getting to do that, you know, every month, every other month. And that eventually opened up the doors for me to go to Japan, uh, you know, through Steve Carino and Zero One. And so uh, Ring of Honor for me put me on the map. If, you know, if there's a map and I'm on it, that's, that's what did it. So, What do you attribute? You talked a lot about attitude. And, and work ethic and being dedicated and traveling and sacrifice. Brad attitude. What what do you attribute 
to to going from a standby match to being uh, being featured on the card and being one of the guys that they're really building the company around. Like, what do you think afforded you guys that opportunity? I've uh, I've never really felt like much of a uh, a featured guy. Or a guy that the company is building around. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to, to be perfectly honest with you, I've been the I feel like I've been a. Uh, um, uh, a uh, very uh, capable wrestler. Yeah, I, I you know, and and you know, <clears throat> I, I can I can get the job done. I think I can make shitty guys look good. I think I can uh, possibly tell a, a story in the ring. I don't know, but um, I don't think I've ever been the guy that that a company's ever been focused around ever in in any company. Um, we uh, we had the tag belts. And six months into our, our, uh, our tag title reign, the boss decided he didn't like our masks. He told the agents, what are these guys doing wearing masks? Now, mind you, we'd been wearing masks all the way up through that title reign and prior to that. But he hadn't been watching. And we were the tag champs. That's as big of a rub as I've ever gotten. And the promoter didn't know our names and didn't even know we were wearing fucking masks to the ring for over half a year. So I've never felt like a featured guy. <laughs> well, more specifically... I, I, no, I have a funny... I remember that conversation yeah. with the masks. Because, uh... My wife made those masks, so it, it, it killed me. Yeah. And we took a lot of pride in them. Because yeah. they were different. We tried to make them different each time. But I remember Johnny... Good time. No, I got good time. What's that again? Johnny Ace. Johnny Ace. Calls me. And I'm in... I don't remember where I'm at, but I'm in a parking lot somewhere. And he's like, hey, we need to uh, talk about the masks. Like, what, the masks? What, you, you like them? He's like, actually, the boss doesn't really see the point of them, and uh, we, need, we, we need to lose them. I was like, all of them? <laughs> <laughs> all of them? That was maybe an elevated state all of mind. Of <laughs> He's like, all of them? He's like, uh, yes, yeah. all of them. <laughs> I'm like, all right. Sounds We're good. <sighs> uh, yeah, it, you know. So you've never felt like a featured guy either. Never. Okay. No. So, well, well, for Only instance, <laughs> well, well, for instance, there's going to be a 60 minute match to determine the first Ring of Honor okay, champion, okay. and you're one of the I four guys. Like I did. I, or yeah, headlining I, against Samoa Joe at Death Before Dishonor, for instance. I, I felt most featured at Ring of Honor. Yeah. I would say I felt pretty featured at PWG. I have felt. Uh, I felt featured at certain times in TNA. You know what I mean? Um, those are match by match basis, you know, obviously. Um, but I would say, you know, as far as this guy's on our roster and we are so happy that he's a part of our roster and like that's, ah, uh, we're lucky to have this guy. I would say Ring of Honor and PWG so far are the only two that have really made me feel that way. So, how do you think you went from a standby guy to being in that position? Uh, what do you mean as far as like, a standby guy to a standby guy? Uh, me meaning what made you from just the jerk off that I'm is expendable to the guy they want to keep booking? Well, that... yeah, I think, you know, I gave really good massages and uh, that had some part now. That's true. Um... I was just everywhere at the time. I was working my ass off. I was trying to get as many jobs as possible. And I was just trying, I was telling, you know, I was working at Old Navy and I skipped work because I called uh, um, Kevin Kelly and I said, hey, you guys are in Austin. Uh, I think Eddie, Eddie Atlas had given me the phone number. Um, and uh, he said, yeah, because I had done a dark, the first time I'd ever done a dark, wasn't actually at a TV, it was at a house show in Florida through Dory Funk Jr. Um, he was trying to promote Adam Windsor and uh, and you know so he had uh, this agreement with with because I guess you know they had an in, Dory had been a trainer at the dojo for a while before you know that fell through and <clears throat> so he still had an in there and so he had this agreement, I guess they had made this agreement where the, you know, they were going to do house shows, like you know, three house shows and then a TV, it's the norm. Um, and they were in Florida and he had those three house shows and he had Adam Windsor on a dark for each night. All, he had three darks, right? But he just had a different opponent each night. 
and I was the guy on the third night, and uh, the other matches were terrible. And my match was terrible, too. I mean, it was fucking horrible. But it wasn't as horrible as the other ones. And I was able to showcase some of my abilities, even though the matches were... Afterwards, I realized, oh, these were all about Adam. Um, but he kind of just exposed himself. But either way, they remembered me from that. And there was some interest there. So I called Kevin Kelly, and they were in Austin. And uh, I was like, hey, what do you guys need? You know, I'll, uh, whatever. I'll set up chairs. Like, just the stupid shit that you... You think might help you, and uh, like no, we're we're good. Don't you know we're good. We don't need anybody. And I was like, all right. And I hung out. And I was like, fuck this, man. This sucks. God, someday I gotta keep at it. And old Navy called me like, coming into work? No. <laughs> and uh, then the unavailable called, and I was like, motherfuckers, I'm not coming to work. I picked up. I was like, hey, there's Paul Linden there. I was like, who's asking? Kevin Kelly. Oh yeah, it's him. Oh, you're fading the call. Like. Uh, well, I'm supposed to be at work, but I skipped, and he was like, we need you in Austin. So, I was like, oh. And I zipped down to Austin and ran to the Irwin Center, and they were like, hey, uh, we, we got you with Perry Saturn. I was like, bleh. I had my tryout there, too. Awesome. You did? Yeah, yeah I did. Tag, right? Yeah, was yeah, it no yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Frank Irwin Center. Yeah. Yeah. Magical place. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but as I think most guys will see, you know, you'll do a series of tryouts, and they might need, you know, they might lead to nothing. I mean, guys feel like they get jerked around. Whatever their issues are, I don't know. I was lucky enough to have several looks uh, that seemed to escalate in value each time I had a tryout. And so that that was something I think worked in my favor, uh, that each time I had a, a dark or a tryout I produced. Because I had tryouts in empty arenas with the boys laughing and critiquing the match around. You know, and that's nerve-wracking. That's, you know... In front of 20,000 people is one thing, but in front of like all these guys you've been watching on TV and you know, you can hear them cracking jokes about you and what, and, you know, so, but it, there was just a lot of like tests or whatever, you know, I think it just kept showing that like, hey, I really want to be here. Um, and TNA had offered me a contract at the time and, and I was like, well, you know, it was like a year. And then I said, well, I'm in school and I don't really, and I said, ah, and then it went to nine months. And they're like, okay, nine months, and then six months, then three months. And they're like, how about three weeks? I was like, no, I don't know. But really it was because I, really, I knew where I wanted to be. And I felt like I was close. And so, uh, you know, they eventually saw that. And, and I was like, hey, this, they gave me, you know, they offered me this deal, but I don't really want to sign it because I want to be with you guys. And so I was fortunately able to use that as a little bit of leverage. And, and it worked, you know. And, and Brian was vouching for me. And, and so I think there was a lot of elements that went into going from just but who to, hey, let's take a look at this guy. So, it's a long answer. <laughs> Did you remember the question? Not a fucking chance. Yeah. No fucking way you remember the Hold question. Hold on, I remember the question. You got it on paper. There's no fucking way you remember it. Now with all your yapping. <laughs> with all my yapping. What's your next question? What was the most jarring difference from the independent circuit to WWE? How did you go from being a fucking regular guy to being a guy that they... Something along those lines, right? Something like that. I think, oh! I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah, okay, you're right. All right. Anyway, so you're saying... <laughs> uh, most, most jarring differences from the independents to WWE. Dreams ruined. Throwing the grass. No, I mean, I mean, um... On the independents, uh... Yeah, you got, you know, 15 minutes, you know, you got... To a half hour, to an hour? Whatever, yeah, it could be that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but but say you're opening match, you know, throw away whatever, eight-man match, and you got 15 minutes in an eight-man match, and you could so show some shit. Um, so so where, what's that? So some shit? Show some shit. Show some, some shit. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> thank you. Uh, uh, to where you show up to work and you might not be needed. You know, that's the difference. You're under contract and you go to work and we got nothing for you. And you sit there and you lose your hunger because what's the fucking point? And that's the difference. Um, I've talked to a, a, a lot of friends who sense it, and Paul has said it for the first five conversations since it got released. You sound like a different person. And he kept mentioning how much better I'd sound or when he'd see me how much better I looked and I... You know, I felt like a different person, and that, 
and and I'm not going to say it was an evil company. It just wasn't a company for me. You know, um, what they wanted, what I wanted, were different. And uh, it, for 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 me, the independence, I uh, I don't know. I get it. I, you could breathe. Man. Yeah, I get that self satisfaction. That's that's the difference. I mean, we all get into wrestling. I would like to think because we love it. We we really love it for the right reasons, not because you know we want to be celebrities in our town or or celebrities in our own mind, which is what it seems like the reason a lot of the people on TV are on TV. Um, but uh, <laughs> now I did forget what I was going to say. <laughs> what were we just talking about? What the difference is? What, what's the what's the major differences between the indies? Yes, and so uh, and and contract life. Well, you know, you give all your power away. I think when you sign a contract, you you know, it's um, everything is up to them. Um, you know, I had, like when I had worked there. Apparently, there's like a list of like 10 or 15 guys where everything revolves around well, those guys. We found that out when we took the tour, man. Sure, we sure. We found that out when we took right, the tour. Right, right. So, I mean, there comes a point when you have to, and it goes back to the confidence, you, you know what you can do and you know what you're capable of doing and you know that you can produce. And it's just a matter of going out there and being like, well, I'm gonna produce the absolute best I can in my match because this is what I have control over. Mm -hmm. Your physique. I have control over my physique. Everything else you pretty much don't have control over. I remember there were times when I had a series of matches with Jimmy Yang, which a lot of people seem to enjoy, I had fun working with him just because he's a really good friend of mine and it was easy. Um, and we could beat the crap out of each other and we knew it was fine. Um, but they would just be edited all to hell. <laughs> the match was like, we'd be like, you know, like five minutes edited out. And so, you know, stuff like that's frustrating when it's matches that you, you took pride in and they get chopped up and, you know, so th that stuff that you just, that's TV, apparently. Um, and, uh, but, you know, I, I would liken it a lot to certain situations in high school, you know what I mean? Because it's, it, it, it's not a company for everybody. And, you know, like Brian was saying, it wasn't for him, and it clearly wasn't for me no either. fucking way. It clearly it wasn't for me yeah, either. And so, way. you know, I believe our new prize tag, Vince, is a gazillion dollars. <laughs> So unless you can pay that by midnight tonight, your balls, they will end up in Hunter's mouth, as they always have. Gazillion dollars. Bearskin rug. Ball in mouth. Ball in ball in mouth in mouth. It's like a ball seat, ball 69 in mouth kind of combination. E elaborate on what you referenced, something you learned on the tour? On the tour. You said there was only there's only twelve or fifteen guys. Oh, it's a list. Yeah, and we learned that on the tour. And I, and I didn't mean on a tour of like like an international tour. I meant uh, we took a tour of the office. Now, mind you, it was it was Paul, myself, and Gene Snitsky, who I've always got along with, and I think you yeah. do too. Yeah, I like Gene a lot. And, I, and I, I, we do. I like Gene. Um, they were getting everyone in groups and sending them to the office to show how the company was working for us. Which which. which that the way they put That's it doesn't put sound it. that the way they put it doesn't sound good, but it does make sense. Like, you've got five hundred motherfuckers in this office trying Tons to make you a star. And yeah, and it does. You know, it was it was an enlightening a, a tour as far as that goes, but it was enlightening too when <laughs> when you find out like like Gene, hey, you know, we meet with Shane, and Gene gives him a big hug and gives him a cigar, and we're the douchebags, and the three of us Gene, are, what's up, buddy? Hey, brother. Oh, hey, what's up, guys? Take a seat. And we, we, we sit down. Gene, and, you want a cigar? Hey. He, he, he gives the spiel, and, and at this point, we're about halfway, three quarters of the way through the tour, and we've seen the fucking building. And it's, you know, it's... Especially it's, the parking lot. You're in there. <laughs> You smelled it. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> we got, we got, it was good. we got, you know, all the, all the, the, you know, the who's who's, but no tag teams, and even some legendary characters, well, but no tag teams. Well, people don't teams. care about tag teams. Well, that's it. I asked Shane. I said, "What does a tag team have to do to be on the walls here?" And he goes, "Guy, well, not since Legion of Doom have I cared about a single tag team." <laughs> uh, well. Shit, all right. I mean, fuck, it's... Cool, it, man. Yeah. So we need spikes on our shoulders. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, and, and, and we look at the like the guys they have, like the 15 guys on the WrestleMania poster, and that's it. 
That's it. I mean, it, that's it. I mean, that's fine. It's a TV show. But if you that's think about it, it's a TV I don't show. want to be on any of those WrestleMania trucks anyways. I mean, they're close-ups. Remember that? We can that see Maria's really peach. Bad. She had like yeah. a beard. Yeah, it really closes up on you. I got ugly, I got bad skin. It's a, it's a TV show. And that's it. And that's what I found out. We're, we're not part of the main cast. We're the... We're the, uh, the, we're the reoccurring, the we're the reoccurring, the reoccurring characters. It's we're not even the reoccurring. No, we're reoccurring. No, dude, we're the guys, like, you know, you know, you know, in Saved by the Bell, like, they're sitting there, and they're bullshitting at the, the at extras, those, not the extras. We're the ones with their backs fucking no, turned. No, we're, But it's the same fuckers who always have their backs turned, that's us. No, we're reoccurring. They don't know their fucking names, man. Reoccurring. That one ain't a lot good with you. Okay, okay. Reoccurring characters. The audience is the extras, man. Okay. With the reoccurring, reoccurring characters. characters, okay. We weren't Urkel, though. Oh, no, Urkel was over, man. Yeah. He was like, Urkel. Who would you liken us to? Boner. Boner's missing. You guys know that, right? My boner. By the time you see it, Boner might be dead. Boner is dead. Yeah. Do they not? Yeah, they... Boner's dead. Boner's dead? Boner's dead. Get the fuck out of here. Seriously? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Wow. Wow. I left Los Angeles. Boner was missing. Fuck. I'm here in North Carolina. Boner's dead. It's rough. Fuck, time. guys. This has gotten pretty heavy pretty quick. Yeah, this has really gotten in the room. Would this be a bad time to ask about Ben Wall? <laughs> <laughs> I, I will, I will tell I you. I didn't know I'll, what his boner looked like. I will tell you this, you man. You didn't show me. The, there's, there's some people where you just, like, you just get a fucking vibe. I like the guy, personally. <laughs> I knew he was crazy. And I you knew he was it. crazy, though, right? Yeah, we, we, used to say, we used to say he was tripolar. It was like a new form of polarity that's fucked up. You know, he, honestly, nobody had been more complimentary of my work, though. Oh, he, was, that. he loved my technique and... and oh, he, yeah, he'd be like... He'd have Brian showing people how to do shit when they would ask him for hey Chris how do you do this you'd be like well that's Brian, Brian it, it was really it was really insane he's a guy I looked up to professionally but at the same time man people with blue eyes are crazy I got him he had extra blue eyes I don't know but I, mean, yeah, I think the business drove him nuts you got blue eyes you know what I'm talking yeah, about right about we're that. fucked right yeah <laughs> Aryan motherfuckers that's it right that's yeah 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 we're, we're, we're Nordic aliens yeah. um, I remember specifically I remember there was a time Planes, I think, uh, yeah. we were in Zurich Switzerland <laughs> finishing up a tour like a European tour um, and, I, and we I mean to answer like your band stuff early on in our career like uh, they thought we weren't taking our jobs seriously because we were working out <laughs> 10 hours a day. He came in to me when I was showering, remember? In Nashville? Yeah. Benoit? Yeah! Benoit. No, Benoit, open up the shower. Did you work out today? <laughs> no, I... It, it I worked buddy. off. Yeah, anyway, so... Yeah, yeah it, was, uh, it was really bizarre. But, like, early on, uh, Chris Benoit and Bob Holly uh, took it upon themselves to kind of take us under their wings, their meat wings, and... Um, and make sure that we were kind of on what they felt was the right path, you know, to, to being successful or to like sustain, you know, sustaining in that in that career. Uh, but I but, fucking left within a month. Yeah, I, mean, I left it was, within a month, man. I left within a month. These guys were lunatics. I hated everything about it. They, you know, they, they, at the same time, though, I do appreciate what they did. For yeah, us. I mean, it but was I, they tried. I mean, knew they were, it was it was like it was similar to like a young boy situation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like pick them up from the airports and stuff like that, and you know, hotels, get all that stuff straightened out, and then you know, waking you up at like you know four thirty and getting to the gym at like five, and working Can't, out. Canceling your Bob Evans order. That was your. Order. <laughs> that was my Bob. Yeah, so uh, and then, yeah, and just like you know, you would you would you would wake up, work out intensely for like two and a half hours, eat this like insane lumberjack meal, and probably do a thousand push-ups like all by nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and so I remember like so they had us doing that for it felt like a, a couple months. You know, we were on this kind of like intense young boyish uh, schedule, and I remember one time we went to a Bob Evans. And uh, I think it was in Michigan or something, and it was snowing. It was just really nasty outside. Anyway, so it was, uh, I was working out with Bob and Benoit and Jamie, mini Benoit, uh, <laughs> was with Brian. And so anyways, we all meet at Bob Evans, and we're sitting there, and 
Um, I mean, Jimmy is like carbon copy little. He idolized them, yeah. for sure. I think he might have come out of Benoit's ass at one point. Um, and like, I like Jimmy. I do too. You know, he, he, he he like the ben zoo, Ma. those he wax loved. sculptures that squeeze out. And so <laughs> we're at Bob Evans, and uh, I think it was like Benoit, Jamie. Bob, I don't know why the three of them would be sitting on the same side. To but, stare us down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I was sitting next to Brian. We were sitting there, and they started with Benoit. And they're like, "What can we get you order?" He's like, "Steak, <laughs> twenty egg whites." Steam my steak. And Ste yeah. yeah, steak. You know, like fifteen egg whites, toast, dry tomato, Boiled chicken. Bread. And she's like, yeah. "How about you?" And Jamie back, same thing, same thing. And then uh, Bob would order something. Give insane. me twice like, as many. You know, Bob would have like this Michael Phelps diet, like just for breakfast. And then he'd go to me. And I was like, I don't want to get beat up. Like, oh, this is so stupid. Oh, how have that way? It's like, just, I just need like six of them. And I'll just take the little stay. Like, we'll take the big one. I'll take the big one. Uh, and then I was like, whatever. And then Brian's like, oh. I'll have uh, <laughs> a big stack of flapjacks and butter and syrup and whipped cream and all this shit. And he's I think like, I had to go order some like, French toast and like yeah, this yeah. retarded, like sugar a diet. What, and bun, a like, breakfast. And she had like a breakfast. Yeah, the lady had like she was taking the order. And she's like, and Ben Lock reaches across the table. Simple, give me the number seven. He's like, yeah. no, no, trash. He's not ordering that. Give him what I had. No, no, he's not eating that. No, no. <laughs> Hey, Ty, you, you see me, man? I can't even finish a sandwich. This no. motherfucker made me choke down every last pukey egg, yeah. and I hate it. He sitting there ordering it, and then when his order got interrupted, he's like, no, he's not ordering that. No, give him what I had. Uh, he was like, oh, I'll kill you. Like, that's what he was saying with his eyes. I will kill you. No, he wasn't saying that. It was all work out with you. It was, it was a but, uh, And then Brian, I just see him with his fork and I'm, he's like, he just kind of tossed. I'm like, well, all right. And like, so <laughs> it, was just, I mean, it was an experience, though. I valued it. You know, it was interesting. Working out with Bob fun. was awesome in a sense, you know, other than I know what it takes to avoid a fatality from Bob because I know that he will rip your goddamn throat out if you get to the gym before him. Okay. And if, stay longer than him. If you oh. stay longer than him. And if you grunt and make sounds while you work out. So now I am the shortest duration, most silent, latest I can get to the gym, worker or outer you could ever see. Because I don't want to wake up with my throat torn out. Compliments of Sparky Play. I'm scared. <laughs> So we, Operation we, Sandman. Yeah, that's a great What's fucking movie. What's your take movie? on Operation Sandman, Paul Lund? It's quite the cinematic flick. If y'all get a chance to check it out, Ron Perlman, you might know as Hellboy. Uh, I think he's a crazy guy. You know. haven't watched it. Yet. I need to watch it. I know. I know. I will watch Operation yeah. Sandman. Check Sorry, it out. Robert Howard. Robert Howard. Also Operation Bob Sandman. Amazon.com. It's like three bucks on VHS. <laughs> what a deal. deal. I stopped smuggling in my, under my nuts a long time oh, ago. Oh, yeah, 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 we should have. Fuck, we it's really so should've. easy now. It Just really, we really like, should have. Like, wow. We didn't fly south. Well, what the hell are we doing? God damn it. There's no metal in that little orange container. Mm. Uh, Brian, what were your thoughts and memories from your first stint in development in Memphis and some of the people that were there? You got to work with Regal, you got to work with Bobby Eaton, Tracy Smothers. Mm -hmm. Reckless Youth. Reckless Youth. Reckless Youth, I did. Um, it was interesting. You know, I, I, I was uh, 21 years old. I got sent to Memphis. Um, I was excited about it. I didn't, you know, I was pretty naive to the whole deal. Um, and uh, all of a sudden came a day when Memphis was shutting down and uh, they told us that, uh, okay guys, you're either getting sent to OVW or the new developmental in, uh, in uh, Ohio. And the uh, first person goes in is Joey Abs and he doesn't get A or B, he gets fired. And we know, we know this is all bullshit, man. It's like a banana. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And and we got fucking twenty mother, twenty other motherfuckers that have to go in there to figure out. Oh, we're going to Cincinnati or Ohio, or we're getting fired. And uh, you know, it went it went Shooter Schultz, bam. It went uh, Dragon, bam. And when I bam, fired, fired, fired. Just like that, but in person at least. In person by by Dennis Brandt, who had never seen us work. And then a week later, when I talked to him, um, they made a they made a video, a highlight video to send to all Japan. And on the phone, he said, well, well you're pretty talented. <laughs> well, thanks for firing me. <laughs> you know, Jesus like, get the fuck out of here. Christ. So that's how it works, man. Yeah. Memories of training under Bobby Eaton and Tracy's mothers. <sighs> Tracy's mothers was awesome. Bobby Eaton was awesome. Um, William Regal was awesome. Um, they all had their own styles. They, uh, I had no problems with any of them. It was all the office who had problems with any of them. You know, Tracy Smothers wasn't office enough. Bobby Eaton wasn't office enough. Um, but fuck. I mean, what I learned from them, I, I don't give a fuck if they're office or not. Man, they're awesome. Bobby Eaton's the man. Tracy Smothers the man. William Regal's the fucking man. So, uh... Yeah, I mean, I learned a shitload. Whether the office approved of it or not, man, I, I learned a lot. Kind of along the same path, Paul, what were your experiences like at OVW? Uh, I, I just, I didn't really like being there. It was, um, I felt like I was going there to kind of appease the office. And it was like, well, I want to get, I want to keep this job. Um, and so they were, we're going to send you to OVW and, and they, they I had a friend who worked for PW, uh, or one of the magazines, and she was, she sent me a lot of tapes of OBW, and I kind of caught up with the with the roster. I had no idea who it was, and I mean, I wasn't really impressed. I think when I got there, everyone was either living in these apartments where everyone lived, or they were living at the uh, like Econo Lodge or Extended Stay or something. So I was like, "Fuck this! I don't plan on being here much longer. I'm just gonna go stay at the Extended Stay." And I was still I still had an apartment in Austin, so I was doing like double rent kind of thing. And uh, I just kept telling myself, I'm not going to be here that long. I don't want to get involved in storylines. I don't want to get involved in any of this shit. Because I don't, I don't like this town. I don't, I don't really care to be here. And, uh, and I was only there for like two and a half, three months, really. Um, it was a fun little learning experience. I, I embraced it. I didn't despise my time there. I just, I just really didn't plan on being there long. And, uh, and so I kind of just kept myself... Out of hindsight, of like I didn't make a good point to be like, hey Jimmy, you know, like Jim Cornette, like, hey, put me in this room, like, um, and I think I had one TV match. And it was actually with Aaron Stevens. It was his first TV match, my first TV match, and he went up, and that was it. And and then like a couple of years later, Jim Cornette comes up to me and he's like, God, I had no idea who you were. I had no idea. I should have done something. I was like, Oh yeah, you had your chance, like. But truthfully, I didn't want to be in their storylines because I didn't want to have to stay in Louisville, living there and doing, continuing on with storylines. Long after I might have been given the go home to go home and and live somewhere that I really preferred to live. And and so, you know, it was an experience and I valued it. I made some friends there and I, I, I learned some things. But at the same time, I, I felt like their whole farm system was just training robots. It was just like... Everyone do the same shit, and everyone learn the same roll-ups, and everyone do the... And it was just like watching the same fucking match over and over again. They had Rip Rogers, and he wasn't putting his ass plug back in his ass. He was sitting there fucking just burying people and asking for yogurt protein bars, and if you brought him a protein bar, you could sit out of training that day. And I was like, what kind of faggots are they training here? Like, this is a bunch of bullshit. Are you kidding me? You know what I mean? They had Bob Holly come in there and just rip everyone a fucking new asshole. It was hilarious. You had Jillian Hall trying to do four fifties off the fucking top rope with her <clears> gut <throat> hanging out, and uh, that was after the day where she took the whole day off of training because she wasn't feeling good. But then came Showtime. She's ready. She's up and ready and doing four fifties and getting ready to work the show and stuff. And like, I remember Bob Holly had everyone. He was like, everyone come sit over here. 
come sit, like, well, he didn't say it because he would have yelled, but they had everyone come sit down on the bleachers, at, like, right before showtime on these OVW shows. And it was when Jillian, like, couldn't bother doing any workouts or anything like that, but come showtime, she's ready to go. And, and Bob Holly's just torn her. He's like, that fucking gun, you need to cover that shit up. And, like, goddamn 450, I would never lay down for that. You're fucking dang, this is horrible. And he's just like, Ripping everybody down for the moonsault, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Poor guy. Uh, but, you know, I, it was my introduction to the ass-kissing phase of the business, where it was just like, how many dicks can we stick in our mouth at one time? The vampire had posters of them up in his bathroom. Oh, he did. Yeah. 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 So, I made some friends. I got along with Danny Davis. The lady was really cool. Cornette was cool. Kenny Boland was really, really cool. I, I, he took care of me a lot. Took me out to eat a lot and stuff like that. And just, you know, just a good dude. Um, we wanted to taste your cock, man. No, I, his yeah. son was a big Ring of Honor fan. Oh, okay, that's so what they were cool. Uh, that's where I met Nathan Jones, who'll break your bones. Yeah, he will. And uh, Horseshoe, and he was cool, and some of the other guys. And, yeah, shoot that. It is what shoot. it was, yeah. but I'm glad it didn't last any longer. <laughs> Thoughts from both of you on Michael Shane? Love him. Yeah, me too. Texted man. him today. Uh, tell him we're having a blast out here. Yeah, he was a class uh, after mine at Sean's. I, I, yeah, I really liked the guy. Um, uh, he stayed at my place in in Florida. He stayed at my place in California. He's my buddy. Yeah. Um, we just recently did a show together. Uh, when I originally met Michael Shane, I didn't like him at all. We met in San Antonio. Well, he's a dick, man. Yeah. Well, that's why I like don't know, him. If you don't know shit. him, yeah. if you don't know him, he might rub you the wrong way. And you should be like, who the fuck is this guy? I mean, I've tried to get him booked with a few promotions. And the promoters, just, you know, they'll, they'll respond with, oh, Michael Shane? Uh, yeah, I mean, I met him in a few shows a, a few years ago. And... He wasn't the nicest guy. He's an asshole. Oh my god, I love him. He's solid. He's good. He just, he probably thought you were some fucking building. Oh, he's, he's an, an asshole. asshole. We don't <laughs> excuses. He's an asshole. I love it. But, um, but I love Michael Shane. So when I originally met him, I'd worked a match with Lance Hoyt. And it was god awful because neither of us had any idea what we were doing. And I remember, you know, he was, he had done some ECW shots at the time, like the real ECW, not the disgrace. And, uh, <laughs> And so I, I valued his opinion as being someone who had been there. I was like, hey, man, what do you think? Before I could even finish my sentence, he's like, oh, that was fucking horrible. That's the worst fucking thing I ever seen. God damn, where the fuck are you fucking the worst? Like, just burying it. I was like, guys, got a fucking ass. I fucking hate this motherfucker. I was like, who the fuck is this guy? What a pretty yeah, fucking cocksucker with his rat, raccoon tail haircut. I was bull. Who the fuck wears that hairstyle? I was just like, ugh. And, uh... Sling it on over. And he turned out, and then later, when we started working in Ring of Honor, um, we worked each other, and I had improved a lot at that point. And I, I, we had a match, and I ended up putting him over, and he was just the complete opposite. Oh, my God. <laughs> and uh, he was like, man, you know, and you've really improved. And you just, <laughs> just really hit it really off. Improved. Yeah, and you just really hit it off. We made good chemistry against him. We became, like, really, really good friends. And he started, he was staying at my place whenever he was in Texas. And, and we had dark matches together. We had dark matches against each other. And I never, to this day, I never understand why they didn't hire him. Because he seemed like almost tailor-made to work for WWE, to be honest with you. I mean, he, mm -hmm. he I mean, uh, motherfucker, in my opinion, throws the best punches second to Shawn Michaels that I find anywhere. I mean, I just, I value his work. So I think he's such an incredible worker. So overrated. Maybe he doesn't have the best business. Yeah, he's a lousy piece of shit. <laughs> but uh, but I love the guy. And we just recently did a show, a double shot in Northern California in Reno, uh, where we ended up getting pulled over and almost arrested. And, and we just had wild times together, man. He's a good fucking guy. I remember uh, this other buddy of ours got shorted on some pay at this show that we just recently did in Reno. And, uh, and we were already kind of hammered, and we were just like, can't believe they didn't pay you, man. It's bullshit. We were like walking back into the hotel room, just like fucked up in the, in the casino. And I was like, ah! I just threw this lamp down, like this lamp that was in the corner, just for whatever reason. We were just bored. And, like, and, then, uh, and then the lamp, it had one of those martini glass uh, lampshades on it. And I was just like, ah! I threw the lamp down. It's like raucous, stupid wrestler shit. And I was like, oh, it didn't break, thank God. And I went to pick it up, and out of nowhere, he just goes, 
He just shattered the whole thing. Like, did this Sean? You know how Sean turns the face and like stomps on it? He just did that to my lamp in my room, and the whole lampshade just went. Psh! I was like, well, guess we're not putting that back, right? And uh, but somehow we ended up putting the lampshade back somehow, and I still just haven't been billed for it. So, but it became the Sean stomp. And, uh, and we had a street fight back in Ring of Honor, which kind of really helped solidify us as stupid idiots. And, uh... And his breath smells like dick. Awful, because he dips a lot. Yeah, and he sucks a lot of dick. Chew dick. Yeah. It's like chopped up, like pump his pockets, yeah, those dip yeah. pockets. Yeah, yeah, dip and dick. Yeah, dick like and dip. dick shavings. Yeah, dick dip. Yeah. I gotta take a dick. That's what, what this is the slang. Memories from both of you of wrestling in Japan. Damn slopes. Like. Yeah, yeah, I liked it, man. They're fucking goofy over there. Um, they're quick to get off a fucking airplane, I'll tell you that much. And they smoke on buses with the windows up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the long tour buses, you'll be taking like an eight hour bus ride from Tokyo to Sapporo. Uh, yeah. A ferry. And yeah, and, like, and they, they prefer rapes smoke to sex. Like, and they, yeah, yeah they do like rape. Weird. Yeah, they like rape. and Japan's exciting, though. I mean, when you go there, you're just like... You really are in another world. I mean, it's so bizarre. I'll tell you what. I'm 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 a short Irish guy, and Japanese condoms don't fit me. So I feel like a million fucking bucks. But but my wife, who you know was my girlfriend at the time, while I was banging out there. Oh, these Japanese condoms don't fit. Let's get you some magnums. Well, the fucking magnums were American magnums. Well, fuck. I'm a fucking short dicked Irishman. The Japanese ones don't fit me, but these fucking. These ma. Anyway, so yeah. The baggy condom, I hate Yeah, it. that's. Yeah, Japan. Yeah, thank you. No, it's a, it's a cool place. I mean. Yeah. Harry they don't shave. Harry yeah, Bush's they don't deal. shave their pubes out there. It's really Ooh. bizarre. Like, I guess you have to be a hooker or in the porn industry to be acceptable at <laughs> shaving. Yeah, it's a really weird place, you know, I mean, because you'll, you'll be in your hotel room, and they always put us up, Zero One always put us up <laughs> off, right off of Rapungi, which is like the party district in Tokyo, and then they tried to shovel us over to another hotel that was uh, not in the party district, it was like, oh, you guys are walking off the party, you know, off the streets, right under the bus to go to the shows, and it's like, and? <laughs> you know, and they're like, no, we can't have this. So we'll move you to another hotel in Boeing District, and uh, Ginza or wherever the yeah, fuck. Yeah. And, uh, but anyways, the TVs in the hotel room, you'd flip to the porn <laughs> channel, and you're like, oh, fuck yeah, like, five minutes for free, what's this big block gonna leave, what the fuck, and like, it's all censored, like, penetration's all censored. No, no pussy, no dick, no but they can shit on the street, and a girl can take 54 loads of jizz on her face, yeah. unedited. Clamps no, and wax no and all this bondage hair. shit. Yeah. Actually, I do remember uh, Tom Howard was with us a lot. He was this UPW military. Guy. He gave Frankie and I rush for the first time. <laughs> and I threw a beer bottle out in the fucking street and almost hit a biker, man. Yeah, he. Gr anyways, yeah, yeah. Tom Howard. He kind of looked like Guile, you know? Was she funny? You know, Guile or Gully is what I used <laughs> yeah, to call him. Well, uh, yeah, um, with the blonde street fighter. But he was like this military ass character, but man, I just remember him coming up to us in Rapungi out of nowhere. Um, it was me, I think Loki, and he was like, Guys, did y'all see the Stomper Bar? I'm like, What? He said, The Stomper Bar, man. It's it's right over there. It's badass. Like, you go in there and you pay money, and like, they'll stomp on your nuts, your high heels. They'll stomp on like gerbils and shit. I'm like, what, why would I want it? What? Like, why, oh why wouldn't you want to? So we went, and it was incredible. I still only have half a ball. Honestly, uh, I did get hung up by Rose Henderson. Rose Henderson Hello. in Rapungi. Hung up in my underwear with my 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 hands tied behind me, my my, my ankles tied to me, and she was whipping me and waxing That's me. That's awesome. It was awesome. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. Japan was a fucking awesome. I love Japan. I, oh, love, I love those goofy gooks. Michael Shane and I accidentally, uh, let's see how the bastards. Michael Shane and I accidentally, actually, we closed down an all you can eat, yeah, Kanuku, like Korean barbecue place. It was like, all you can eat, please come, take your shoes off, cover up your tattoos. And uh, we went to this Korean barbecue place, it was all you can eat. 
And then like the next tour we went back and they were out of business. <laughs> We'd had probably about 21 plates each. And uh, Tom Howard and Predator were like, no, that's not possible. <laughs> you know, like, whatever. I don't know. Japan, it created a, a cabin fever mentality also if you were, like, crazed, you know. I mean, when I would come back to America and just be craving a McDonald's fucking hamburger, like, yeah, it's bizarre. You know, it's, mm. it's a weird fucking place. And they, like I said, we don't, they don't shave their bushes. Mm. Poofy. I think I'm still mm. pulling hairs off. I don't know why I even bothered. Brian, where did Leonardo Spanky come from? Uh, I uh, landed on my first tour. Uh, there was press there, and they asked me about Leonardo DiCaprio, and I had no idea what they were talking about. And then a young boy told me, You're Gilbert you. Grape, very yeah. good, read time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then a young boy told me, Yeah, yeah, Hashimoto thinks you look like DiCaprio. <laughs> And uh, I did I, one match, I think, um, as just a regular, you know, a spanky. The next day, I got fucking shipped off to get my hair cut. I got measured for my trunks, and yeah, I was a fucking faggot named Leonardo, uh, Leonardo Spanky. Not Spanky DiCaprio, mind you. Leonardo Spanky. Leonardo Spanky. Like, Spanky was my fucking last like name. Like rejected Ninja Turtle. Yeah, come on, Spanky DiCaprio. Fucking English. So that that's how it came about. But I, I don't know, I had a lot of fun doing it. He loved it. He loved yeah, it. He loved yeah. taking these Japanese girls with their wooden teeth and making oh, them pretend they were so feeling weak. like I'm they're raping them. They're gonna do the pose. pose on Titanic. Yeah. It was... Have you ever raped anybody? <laughs> you I haven't raped. Right? Like, none of you guys have raped anybody. But imagine taking somebody against their will. I don't want to do it. You're gonna do it, and then drag them <laughs> over guardrails. <laughs> You're gonna do it, and then put him up on the second rope, and you're gonna pose for me. And they don't speak the same fucking language, and they're nervous. It's as close as I've ever came to rape, and I yeah, I it was kind of fun, but that shit sucked. Rape? The rape part sucked. Putting girls against their rope. And I got fucking heat too. Why do you always grab fat girls? <laughs> I'll grab any fucking girl I can get. Anyways, yeah, he's dead now. But the aneurysm guy got, yeah, got on me for grabbing fat girls. Zero One's awesome, though. I loved it. I had a great time. I remember Carino and Loki and I found, uh, like, ten grand in the back of a cab. One time in, like, Sapporo. <laughs> it was, like, blizzard outside. We had this KB place to eat. It was an all-you-can-eat. We always skipped out the all-you-can-eat KB places. And I just remember we, the three of us, crammed in the back of a cab, and there was a purse back there. I'm like, what the fuck? And it was drowned like 10 grand in the back of it, and we just did What'd you up. buy with it? I don't remember. Drugs. You wasted on a frivolity. That, yeah, your pantyhose. You could have fucking invested it in gold or silver. I know. You could have bought proper Springer Bucks. Springer Bucks? Yeah. That's a cons conspiracy I wanted to look up. Yeah, does Jerry Springer have enough stroke in Chicago that he can issue Springer yeah, Bucks? Yeah, Springer Bucks, is that of true? Hang his, his uh, guests. It's well, like, he oh, knows what we're talking about. Take these Springer Bucks. Springer Bucks. And they'll do you good, whether you go to Victoria's yeah, Secret or Chicago or Springer Bucks. Dilly's Hot Dog Stand, and, you know, the place that fucking Ferris Bueller went. Like, Springer Bucks are good at all those places. Is right? It, is it really only 11.50 right now? No, it's, it's like... It's been 11.50 for the like last two three hours. Morning. It's yeah. like 2 in the morning. Oh, yeah, it's like 1.49 a.m. The commitment we make. Tell you lay, lay it on us. Give us anything. Please, yeah, give yeah, us anything. Yeah. Oh, we're we're, we're, we're wide awake. Yeah, yeah. We got a new case of beer. I'm going to bum more Adderall off of this. I'm going to We're just kidding. DMT. What are your thoughts on DMT? You know, I've never done DMT. And if I've, you have DMT, let us know. Because you're looking at two guinea pigs. How about, how about a, uh, um, um, what's that, uh, um, the, the, the chamber. Oh, the deprivation chamber? That's a deprivation chamber. No, yes. I, I looked up research on a place in Burbank that apparently had a bunch of deprivation chambers. And I, I don't know, maybe they went out of business or something? Mm. But I couldn't find them again. I'd really, love to do it. I don't it. know if you guys are familiar with deprivation chambers, but it's basically like an esophagus that you... 
the submerged in. But I think it's a sarcophagus. 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 Thanks. But I think there's like a a certain ratio to salt to water, but you're submerged in a level of salt water. Where you don't feel like you're. But it's It's a certain amount to your body weight. And uh, it gets you to a point where you're weightless, in darkness. Um, you, no all, sound. Yeah, no yeah. sound. I mean, it's basically like... It, sensory it's a, deprivation. Yeah, yeah, it's sensory deprivation. And what this does is it eventually um, creates almost like a hallucinatory effect where you're... Bam, <laughs> You're taking on this path and... Um, you know, I haven't quite experienced it yet. I'm still on the pat on the hunt for it, but um, different levels of experimentation. You know what I mean? Like testing the human boundaries. Uh, you know, in a way where like I could look at a lot of different substances and know that these are lethal to the human body. Well, then I can stay away from them. There's no reason I'm even bothering, right? But in certain instances, uh, you know, I've done a lot. Of, I've done a lot of research on DMT. Um, read some books on them. And uh, the spirit molecule, you know, this is what they call it. But that, that's something that I think is, uh, should be examined more on like a, a broad spectrum. Because I, I don't know why, but I, I, think, I, I think the government as a whole, maybe, there's a lot of reservations about experimentation. You know what I mean? I think people are willing to be guinea pigs and willing to put their bodies um, on the line for science. I mean, I think that's a phenomenal contribution, to be honest with you. I actually have a debate ongoing with myself, but with anyone that cares to listen, where I'd like to think, you know, there's a big issue with, um, what is it, uh, cruelty, not cruelty, but um, in the prisons, uh, you know, executions that are deemed, um, not inhumane, what's it called? Uh, do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, cruel or cruelty, but, but basically, I think you should take all your your condemned criminals. That might be your new lab rat. You know what I mean? Why not take some of these these people that are that are sentenced to death instead of making all the taxpayers pay all their tax monies, which I understood, what am I I'm understood to believe we pay taxes whenever there's an execution. We're talking about executions in prisons. We pay tax dollars for executions, right? You know what I'm sick of paying tax dollars for? Executions. Mm -mm. Um, unemployment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what I was thinking was, you know how like certain executions are deemed... Mm. What are they, inhumane? Execute them all. Well, no, I was just thinking like, I think criminals and people that are deemed... Oh, like, I know your thoughts. I think he wants yeah. to put them out in the ocean and have the sharks eat them. Well, is, that, a, is that what he said? No, yeah, I've said experiment. He's gonna say it, he's gonna say it. But I do he's... think you put them out in the ocean. <laughs> I knew it, I knew it. sharks. I mean, I think sharks need to eat, right? And They're gonna eat. If you give them the right you know, the right feed. Open water, those motherfuckers. Those guys can make, they can swim back to shore alive. Sure. Maybe they deserve a second chance. Sure, sure, no, sure. Probably don't. Like no escape. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm with no, you. I mean I think they should be tested like science, scientifically tested, whether it's DMT or LSD or whatever. But I think <laughs> these are your specimens, these criminals, which have no ends. You know you're gonna kill them. Mm. You know you know you're gonna whether it's through uh, firing range, which they still use in Utah, I think. Do they still use the firing range? I think that's the only state where they still use the. Is fire, that right? Yeah, the firing range. Kaboom. It's the it's the death penalty in Utah. Uh, at least it used to be recently, but um, every other day is basically lethal injection or electric chair. Mm -hmm. But even the electric chair was deemed like too inhuman. Is there no noose anymore? Cruel. Oh, what's it called? Does nobody get hung anymore? Oh, there's hanged. definitely no noose. Is it hanged or lynching? Hung? It's hanged, right? Hung. Oh. You get hung. Is it hung? I think you're hung. Yeah, I think you're hung. Yeah. Like the like the show. I think when you guys look it up, and I'm gonna be the dick. Hanged, you're hanged. It's hanged. You might be right. I th cause I'm that dick. You have odd I'm knowledge. Dick. I'm that dick. I think it's hanged. What are your guys' favorite death penalties? Cruel and unusual punishment. That's the issue. That's what it's called. Is that what it is? Cruel and unusual punishment. It's a huge issue. What do you guys, do? You guys have any favorites? 
No? Mm -hmm. Trying to be political? Good call. Fire range is good. Fire range is badass, right? Yeah, you're gonna go. go. Yeah, why so, not? so, how many guys? You just yelled, take it! We got 10 of us on the fire. Just range. get fucking blown away. How many have live ammo? I think there's like yeah, three out of three. ten. Yeah. Okay, maybe. that's that's okay. Okay. Some street knowledge. <laughs> so you so so you're less than you're less than thirty three percent likely to be the one that killed the guy. Oh, I thought it was twelve guys. That's not bad then. Not uh, I'm just made up a number. It could be twelve. Yeah, I'm not sure. Mm. But I do did. remember uh, you can't you can't do that on you can't. Is it you can't do that or you can't, can't do that say on that television. on television? Yeah, the slime. Yeah, they, had the, they had the firing squad yeah. out. Yeah. Alanis Morissette, that's where she did. Was she on there? She was on the little oh, girls. Shit. Isn't it ironic? <laughs> that's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you got for us? No, I don't know. Yeah. DMT. DMT. Dimethyltryptamine. I've never done it. Outer Bean Encounters. Yeah, it's a Joe Rogan loves the shit. Yeah, I just get so tired of that guy. What yeah, me too. Bar. Me too. But but his shit with that fucking um, Carlos Benzia. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah, awesome. Yeah, that was pretty. Putting good. that fucking thief yeah. in his place. Yeah. South Park bearing that fucking dipshit was mm. hilarious too. I ain't got no dick, man. <laughs> yeah. I got no dick. I got no dick. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Fuck <laughs> Carlos Benzia. Come on, man. man. The fucking hack. Uh, yeah. I'm no comedian. Well, mm. that'd be fun. You know, I saw George Lopez uh, sing Sorry. that that low rider song during halftime at USC versus uh, Arizona, the Wildcats. Last game of the season, uh, nobody was making it to a bowl game. Uh, dun, 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 dun. I think on TV. We got free tickets. Yeah, my buddy yeah, Brad. Free. Free. Yeah. He's right. <laughs> what does he matter? What's gonna be on this wall? Doors locked. At, at what point, at least space. In the yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Space yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah. Bob, Benoit's eyes. <laughs> Can you do that? The Bob Evans logo. <laughs> if it takes, I mean, I'll help out. I don't know anything. Fatality. Mortal, Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Having the Mortal Kombat fatality with the throat getting <laughs> ripped out. I mean, is it possible to do yeah, that? Yeah, it is like yeah. Have weird psychedelic things yeah, flash up, flapjack. Oh. We could, have, we could be hiding from giant fish. <laughs> yes, yes. Or octopi. I'm sorry, Chris. All the ghosts of we could talk shit about all the dead wrestlers and they can fucking come oh, back no. to get us. <laughs> well, that's like ten minutes. Oh, we can work them, man. It's a paranormal activity. I'm scared of it. I didn't say that. It's horrible. <laughs> really though. So oh, so. so for watching that stupid movie. Oh, we're going. <laughs> okay. Every, so 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 we've worked <laughs> out. We've worked out. We've had breakfast. Just take us through a typical day at TV. The atmosphere. Do we have to? Okay. I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's a matter of, uh, you know, be there at this time. Are you are you working? You'll find out like four hours later. Yeah, okay. Show up on time or you get stooged off by one of the referees who's at the door. Who's at the writing door. Writing times. If you get if you're late, if they don't like you, because you know, and you get five hundred dollars, popular, then... and, you, and and our payday is five hundred dollars, <laughs> and then we get we have the expenses for the day. So yeah, we're fucked to be there early to do nothing, possibly, or do something, win the world title. Who knows? Yeah, the downtime, the, the forced downtime can be kind of that can drain you, you know, if you don't dictate your time well, but I mean, when you're sitting there and you, and you know you don't, you know you're not needed for anything, you know you're not wanted for anything, um, it's frustrating. It's frustrating to sit there and it's frustrating to... It's still not wanted for anything. Yeah, the, I mean, I, I, I carried a real sense of unappreciation when I, when I worked there, to be honest with you, because I felt like I tried every single thing I could possibly do. Well, dude, you, that went, was like, you went from please don't die yeah. <laughs> you know, please don't die. You're the guy killing himself. Do you know what I mean? Honestly. Yeah. No, no, I'm interested. I mean, I just, I wanted to do anything I could for this company, right? Mm -hmm. I wanted to carry its banner, but I just lost respect for it the more, the longer I worked there. I lost respect for the guys that I used to look up to because I, I saw how they really were. And this is just me personally. Some guys might really like these kind of people. I don't know. Uh, but for me personally, I just, and, and you know, certain guys I really liked. And I was like, cool, I'm glad these guys are really, really cool. Um, but, uh, but there was just, you know, there was a lot of, my puffy clouds kept getting crushed and it was just like, 
man, this is disappointing in a way, you know? And, uh, and when I feel like I was doing everything right, you know, and, and I genuinely like um, interacting with fans and, and an audience and, 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 you know, often enough I'd be the only guy after the arena shows, I mean, I'd wait three, three and a half hours after the build, you know, the guys, this, the building would be closed up and dark and I'd still be there signing autographs. I was like the only one. I hate that shit, by the way. Yeah, so but I, I mean, but I, 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 but I enjoy that because I was there. I know how that is to be a fan and to, and to see these guys in the, in the flesh and be like, wow, you know, and then to get to talk to them. But also know what it is to get blown off by these cocksuckers. And, and, and sadly, most of them are cocksuckers. And they, they think they're too big for their own, you know, and they're, they, you know, they just walk past, and, and even their baby faces. Hey, 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 hey. And just, you know, like, oh, I didn't hear anything. And it's, walk, and it's like, how is that, how does that, how does that happen? It's disgusting. For me, it's disgusting, because it's just like, these fucking people, are feeding you, they're paying you the fucking, all their money, most of these, the ticket prices are retarded, how high these ticket prices are, right, especially in the economy, everything's expensive, but these people are mostly broke, this, you know, wrestling caters to, uh, it doesn't cater to, uh, to a rich audience, it does, maybe in a small demographic, but most of the wrestling audience, it's having money issues. Working class. Exactly. Yeah, or but, lower. But George Clooney doesn't have to fucking hang out and fucking sign shit for me. I paid to see his movie. Right, right. I paid no, to I get see that. his performance. But I, I guess I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like, signing my autograph. I paid my six dollars, my nine dollars, my twelve dollars. I wanted to see him perform as a fucking surgeon. I think there's a difference, though. You know what I mean? Like, I think there's a little bit of a difference. I, 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 I understand that. I we, think guys have a responsibility in a public setting at, to an extent. You know, I think there's an issue there where. Uh, it is, it is being a better person. I understand. I don't know. I, I got you. It, it's the nice thing to do. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. It, 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 I guess I just can't stand all that pseudo celebrity bullshit. Just the people walking by like they're better than, than people. And... Now, now, you, now, now for, for me, for example, do you think I got that? No. Or I'm just a, I'm, I'm more of a no. genuine. Because, I mean, you'd scurry in the car or whatever, prick. and just yeah. look yeah. Okay, like, oh, good. maybe he's shy, whatever. I, which I'm a, yeah. But, I mean, the... You I know, I don't even own sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, I don't even own sunglasses. Come on, man. No, I know. No, I know. I'm with you. I know what you're saying. No, I know what you're but saying. The, I'm with the you. point is, you know, there was just instance after instance where it was just frustrating. You're sitting here and you're like, I think I'm doing everything right. That would equate to a, a good employee and, and an honest employee who's, who's, who's defending this company and putting everything he has into this company. But it just doesn't feel reciprocated. And then the more, I, the harder I work, the more I feel unappreciated. And, and I'm not meaning it to sound like I'm whining. It's just when you work hard and you genuinely believe in something and you care about your work, you'd like to think that it's at least valued somewhat. And I, I very rarely felt that. I very rarely felt valued at all. I mean, even to something like, hey, we're going to have you get eliminated by Snitsky at a Royal Rumble. To me, it was like, fuck, I'm in a Royal Rumble. That's amazing. This is like my favorite pay-per-view. This is the highlight for oh, me. Dude, they've been talking. They, they bon that bump they did a four highlight years ago. for me just to be in the Royal Rumble. I was like, guys, yeah, this yeah. is like a dream. Another dream come true, right? Just to be in the Royal Rumble and like not get eliminated right away and set that record. <laughs> it was like, well, I get to last for a couple seconds at least or a minute or something. So I went in there and did what I could with as many people as I could and, and they were going to Snisky to eliminate me and I was like, well, fuck, I'm not going to just take this retard, you know, fucking uh, elimination like every other lazy ass who's like, man, I just want my paycheck and just send me over the top, brother. And I was like, fuck that, man. I'm going to have my shit stand out. Uh, if I'm getting eliminated, I'm going to make sure my elimination stands out. And so it was like, what can you do? And we worked them out, and it turned out to be that fucking that clothesline that took my fucking head off. And, and they were like, well, we'll send an ambulance if it's if it seems you know like it wor it's worth it. And and obviously it was because it, it it took the attention away from the match. And then they sent out you know they sent out the uh, the, the gurney or whatever. And then I get to the back, and they're like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. And they're like, well, that was good, but it, it was too good. It was too good. And then I had heat or something for that. And it was like, what the fuck do you want me to do? Just be like, the rest of your fucking clones? Like, that's not me. I'm not going to do that. I'm sorry. I'm just, uh, I, 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 I strive for a higher level. And I'm not going to settle for mediocrity. I, sorry. So take us back in the context of a typical day. 
uh, let's say you're at TV, you find mm-hmm. out, let's say you're working m M&M. and Okay. You said, you said for six months, Vince McMahon didn't realize you wore masks. Yeah. So, like, who would you have interaction with? How would the structure of laying out a, a match or a segment go? Well, it's, it's all case by case, you know. And, and, and with the last question, I, I love the house shows. Um, you get to wrestle, you have to put somebody over, or you go over, you got a certain amount of time. But like 15 minutes, a lot of time, 10 minutes. 10 minutes, and fuck, I'm, you know, I'm working uh, Vladimir Kozlov, who hasn't debuted, but I get a wrestle, you know. Um, so the difference between uh, TV and just a house show, where I'm just some schmuck coming out and losing, is night and day, man. Even just losing, but getting to wrestle. Is, is, is huge. Um, now, you're saying when, when you find out what you have to do, what's the day like? Yeah, based on your experiences and where you guys were at, who maybe took the most time to, to help you and, and lay stuff out with you? How much well, freedom did you have? How much instructions did you it's, have? It's, it's case by case. You know, uh, different matches have different agents assigned. Um, we tend to get a lot of the same agents. So, like, I'll say Ricky Steamboat, and I'd get Ricky Steamboat, Arn Anderson and Dean Malenko, probably more than anybody. And so, specifically, I'd say Arn. Like, those three guys helped me out a lot. And I know that, you know, Brian feels the same way as, you know, Ricky and Arn. They were phenomenal help. You know, but every agent had their pros and their cons, I felt. Um, every agent was working under the umbrella of the office. And very, very few agents, if any, ever had the, the ability to actually speak something other than the common voice. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So there's extremely frustrating situations where we'd show up to the building excited for our match. Uh, wh- whichever agent we were assigned, depending on which, because there were other agents, not of the three that I mentioned, but others um, who do taxes, who, you know, would lie to us to our face. And, you know, when we would try, well, this is what they want you guys to do and say, Okay, well, what do you think about this? Mm, I don't know, guys. Well, do you mind at least running it by the office and seeing if we can do this? We know it's, you know, different than what you got. But it was an, al- it was an alternative to the everyday, normal, same shit. Because that's what a lot of the agents would offer were, like, formulaic fixes to your matches. Like, that's what we were even asking them for. But it was like, well, this is what I used to do. And that's helpful. Um, but, but also don't... You know, it helps when it's collaborative. When you can collaborate with someone, that's when you can create something. But a lot of these agents would be like, okay, well, I'll go to the office. And then they'd come back like five minutes later, they'd be like, office hated it, said no. And you find out they never even went to the office. And you just, you know, uh, I'd like to think I'm an adult at that point. It's like, look, just tell me. You don't want to go to the office and speak up for us. We'll come up with an alternative. Don't lie to us. You know, let's just lie to my face. It's, how am I supposed to respect you when I know that you're constantly lying to me? Because you're either too cowardly to tell me the truth. Well, I guess that's the only option. You're just a coward. Oh, what was the question again? How do you yeah, prepare it, a day? Been a few, yeah. Well, uh, so, when, I mean, there's, a, there's instances where you could get derailed. <laughs> I, I just asked him what it was. Uh, what, what was the question I mean, again? I, I guess putting it in Brian's words, would you find it was more of a collaborative effort to put something together, or were you find that you were more dictated to, this is what they want? How open were they to the collaborative, to putting something together with your input? It's, it, it was all case by case. I mean, yeah, like said, different, different agents, di- different philosophies, absolutely. Well, how would you rate the experience overall? Would you say they were receptive to your ideas or more, they just wanted to plug you in a spot, this is what you're doing, kind they, of overall? They, well, they had a job to do. You know, they wanted us to, you know, here's what you had to do. Some people were, uh, you know, better about it or not. I mean, it's, 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 it, they just have to tell you, you got to get, like you said, Eminem over tonight. You got, you got five minutes. Here how here's how it's done. Uh, I mean, if you're asking which agents do I like, you know, Dean Dean Malenko helped us out a lot, and I, I think uh, uh, Ricky Steamboat and Arn Anderson are geniuses. That's that that's my opinion. Long and the short of it. When you go back a little bit to what you said, you had that meeting, the, the tour of the office. Mm-hmm. And Shane McMahon says, a tag team hasn't made an impact on me since the Legion of Doom. Mm-hmm. 
Did you regret your decision at that point to be asked to put in a, be put in a tag team? No. Paul and I talked about it afterwards, and we, we knew that, that, that it was pretty much what we assumed. I mean, we're, we're fucked, you know? We're, we're, we're fucked. It didn't matter if, if people were cheering or not cheering, you know? It sounded like us. We were getting over. Um, but I know plenty of people like, hey, did you hear the pop I got? And I'm like, yeah, I heard it. I don't think it's what you heard. So I could be one of those people, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but I think we were doing pretty good for people without my time, people without care, you know, anything established other than gear, you know? I mean, yeah, they, I mean, they, I feel like they kind of, we were in a position that we were in because our ability spoke for itself. And we were producing at house shows. And we drug closed. tests. We're, other people were failing drug tests. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. kept champs. Yeah. Why we kept the belts. And yeah. so, but, you know, and so I think eventually they, they, had, they had no choice because there wasn't anyone better. But we were producing. We were, if you want a match to produce, you'd come to us. Um, singles, mostly Brian. Um, but, but, you know, you'd come to us and we'd produce, we'd, get, we'd put guys over, you know, they, they'd send all these tests at us, you know, like the Gemini, you know, they were trying to get the Gemini over. And, and so we had to, you know, suffer through that as far as like, well, at least the guys are willing to listen to us and we can kind of put something together. But it was just like, uh, and that like, was work getting them to listen to us. So too, we yeah, had to fight for that. Yeah, it was, it was. I mean, we had to like pretty much earn every bit of respect we got there. But it came, you know what I mean, eventually. If not with the workers, with the agents, you know, and stuff like that. But sadly, most people there are powerless. They're completely powerless. And they're all just, they give up all their power to the nutcracker at the top. And so, uh, or nut sucker. <laughs> um, and uh, so, I mean, to me, that's the biggest turnoff, really, is just like, I don't want to be surrounded by people who just are so ready to give up their power to somebody like that who doesn't even have their best interests in mind. Why should I? You know? I'm guilty of it. Yeah, it, it's a vampire of a company. Um, well, it's it's what you, for me, and I'm sure the same as you, a kid of the 80s, born in 79, you know, fucking superstars on yeah. Saturdays, WWF, and... Ultimate Warrior, and yeah, of course, man, you gotta, even after all the shit you might hear from all the bitter people, I've, if, fuck it, I've gotta try it. You I have to see it for yourself. Yeah, you have to see it for yourself. Yeah, and it, it wasn't what I, what I hoped for, but fuck it, it, it is what it is. In man. the words of LeVar Burton, it. don't take our word for it. <laughs> Reading Rambo? Oh, really? Remember that? I remember reading Rainbow. Take a look, take a look. Rainbow. Can we take a piss break, man? Do you have to go? Pissing rainbow. Yeah, no, I gotta go. So okay, go ahead. The Bar Burton, remember you? It's on the <laughs> Star Trek. some of the some of the guys that you did produce with uh, memories of wrestling Eminem it melts in your mouth <laughs> not in your hand <laughs> uh, <laughs> coconut flavor is good I, they are good right had I introduced you to them didn't I holy fuck yeah have y'all not been spread of this genius yet out here? Coconut M&M's. Coconut M&M's. I'm not kidding you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't have the peanut filled, coconut, coconut peanut filled would be fucking incredible. That'd be like all I enjoy. Ooh. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Coconut M&M's. Yeah, um, um, I think we could agree on one thing for sure, that Deuce, right? It was Deuce, not Domino. Domino's Cliff. Douche. Douche. Is the worst wrestler I've ever wrestled. Fuck. I, if I could say it a million times for the next however many hours he got, he's the worst, the worst, the worst, the worst, the worst, the worst. Wrestling star from the past doesn't mean you should. 
follow him. All right. And that's that. I mean, that's that's the biggest shit talking here. He's He'd probably the be a better gay He's porn the star. Worst. He's the worst. What a cocksucker. Okay. So yeah, douche. So no, no, no big shining memories of uh, Deuce and Domino. No, yeah, no, man, the reason Domino. motherfucker wouldn't fucking bump yeah, on I... double drop kicks. This motherfucker would come screaming across the ring and drop kick the fucker in the teeth, and he'd do everything he could to hang on to the ropes. No, I, I remember. Uh, I remember he's a piece of shit. Horrible. I remember he's a fucking piece of shit who's living off his dad's laurels. And his dad's nice, man. I bump smokes off his dad. His dad's bump smokes off me. His dad's cool, man. His dad's also told me he's gonna kill me. Should've he hates me and then told me he loved me. All within the same conversation. He didn't hit you with a coconut, though, did he? No, he's never hit me with a coconut. What was the story behind that? Nothing. He was on crack, it turns out. Oh, I, I don't know if he was on crack, but but I was I was told by 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 a, by a, uh, <laughs> it was it was Brian Danielson, Doug Anderson, uh, uh, Jimmy Fly Stuka, and another student. I'm not sure what his name was. All sitting around. Hey, brother, I love you. I love you. We're drinking beers. Danielson won't drink any. Hey, what's wrong? And he just tells me he's gonna kill me. I'm a piece of shit. And then by the end of it, he loves me. And Doug Anderson tells me, don't worry, he's. It's crack. I gay for you. And I didn't know. I was too young. I didn't know what crack was. I didn't even smoke weed at that point, you know? So, yeah. It's, like, that's, that's how you wind up in the shack. I wish you were my son, brother. I do like a man. I do like him. Yeah. Maybe you did kill him. I girl. know you're going to say that. Or not, or not, right? Or not. I'm a fan. Oh. Um, <laughs> kill his douchey little son first. <laughs> Flushed him down the toilet. <laughs> And they wouldn't have been able to strong bump us. We're gonna run into him on one of these indies, right? I hope so. We're never, never gonna, gonna run into him again. You never do your book. Dude. I got a sucks, sucks. guy. I'm not gonna take a bookie that's it's fucking him. Some... Are you kidding me? Wait, wait, wait. Are you gonna get booked at the Samoan factory or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> well, so, anyways, yeah. Uh, memories of uh, matches and experiences with William Regal and Dave Taylor. You know, it's it's interesting because I I uh, I got sent to Memphis. Um, I went to a bullshit wrestling. Sc I, I don't want to say bullshit. I went to a wrestling school in Dallas first, NWA Southwest. But I wanted more. Went to another wrestling school, Sean's. From there, got signed. Went to to Memphis. That's where I trained under Regal, who was um, he'd been through his stint in WCW and kind of this was his trying to you know, um, and fuck, I owe a lot to him. Um, and, and since him and Dave Taylor are friends, Dave Taylor and I get along, we ran into each other at uh, a TNA. I, I love Dave Taylor, I love Regal. Um, it's not to say Paul's gonna have the same, uh... No! <laughs> you know, maybe I was in an elevated state of mind at some time when I worked with them and they didn't like it, but, you know, they're, they're cool. I mean, um... I, I did tend to drop kick Dave Taylor in the ribs for some reason. All like for some reason my feet just went. It was go. just meant to be every yeah, time. Like, every time I tried to drop it. kick him in the face, but like it just went to his ribs. <laughs> and he and he looks like Don Flamingo. Because he's all ribs. Punch out. Yeah. But no, I liked working with both those guys because they slowed us down. You know, they really slowed us down and like really uh, force you to. To learn what you're doing people, in a different, yeah. I mean, you're you're, awesome. you're yeah. learning like nonstop with these guys, you know. So I mean, it's a real pleasure. I would say more than working with any other tag team, <laughs> to be honest with you, to get to work with like two real veterans. Two ones. guys well more experienced than us, like yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, 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 and they're willing yeah. to bomb for you. Like these guys are. That that was something that was so insulting with douche was that <laughs> it was like here you have Regal, who's been everywhere. Here we have Taylor, who's pretty much been you know a similar extent. Um, these guys have done almost everything. They've been all over the place. They've had all, all the world's experiences. And they never once said, we won't bump for you. I and mean, they were bumping like crazy for us, all over the place, backdrops and all that stuff. And these guys are beat up dudes. I mean, you know what I mean? I mean you would imagine, Regal and Taylor, they're beat up. They have a ton of mileage on them. But they were still there taking everything we would give to them, you know, and, and never complaining. Well, if anything, they were suggesting people, more. Man. Yeah, what, what, Deuce not bumping for you? Yeah, and so yes. when Deuce shows up and he's just like, oh, well, you know, my dad's, you know, the hooker killer and, all this, and like all this shit, and it's like, well, what the fuck, you know, Hollywood. like, you're not, you're not gonna bump for us, but you got these two like really high, you know, top class veterans, and they're, you know, 
And so it was just, you know, working with them was a real pleasure. Uh, and it, you know, I learned a lot. It I was learned a lot. Pleasure. Yeah, I learned a lot. Who else do you got for us? Uh, memories of the, the four-way ladder match at Armageddon. You know what? Honestly, before you get to that, Casey James and Idol Stevens was my favorite match that we had. Yeah, that was I, awesome. That was the, the, the most that accomplished, I felt. Yeah. Because they were guys they fucking didn't give a shit about either. Casey James is awesome. He is amazing. Awesome. I really like Aaron wrestlers. Stevens too. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Should we, actually, funny. Should we tell the Casey James story? Which Casey James? <gasps> oh, please tell so the like, Casey James. We've been working James Casey story. James and Aaron Stevens, the <laughs> teacher's pet or whatever. They were. You know, we were working them for months, right? Months. We were on a pay per view. <laughs> it was like, oh, we need this other. We need another pay per view match. Uh, put the tag titles on her, I guess, and I guess have them work over there working. <laughs> And so it was us and them, and it was actually in North Carolina, wasn't it? It was in uh, well, I was thought in you were gonna talk about it. I thought you were the paper view. I am. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I am. It's a little oh, backstory. I yeah, it's yeah. Like you tell stories, you get a little backstory. People are like, "What the fuck is he talking about?" They might still be thinking that. But so we had this great match with them on the pay per view. No one expected anything, and we we pulled five stars out of a four star, you know, capability. I, mean, I was we very, really very satisfied. Yeah, we really yeah, came through with flying colors, and they were all really surprised. Um, so that was a real feather in our cap, uh, to the point where they were like clapping, I think, when we came back to Gorilla, um, which is really rare. So if the boss is clapping, that's a good thing. So all four of us, you know, we all felt really good about ourselves. So fast, fast forward to like, you know, six months later, and the other teams already split up long before and everything, and I, Casey James at this point, uh was put on the, the new ECW as somewhat of like an enhancement guy, but he was still under contract, always had been. So apparently, and I wasn't there to witness it, but the story is that Vince <laughs> is walking by uh, the monitor, and Casey James, phenomenal, you know, he's like 25, he's born like, the late 60s. I don't know. He's fucking Bobby Eaton. He's in It's weird. It's know. weird. Yeah, he's awesome. Anybody's seen him. Yeah, and he's Vince amazing. is walking by, and he's like, he walks me. Who is this kid? Sign this kid. And just walks off. Yeah. He's like, been uh, he's been title on pay-per-view. Yeah. He's been tag title yeah. fields. He's yeah. been under contract for a while. You, I thought you were going to talk about him in Europe. In the oh, with the broad with the yeah, hey, man. oh yeah, Casey but, James. Is like, <laughs> that's what I. You're looking at a way to get rats. He should be your teacher because there's this one in Europe called Big Bird. Quite a few guys have touched. She's pretty nasty. She's like a queen rat. Um, if you can imagine a 25 year old being, she was like a rat. She was like a 12 year old rat when WCW was around. Apparently, that's big down here in the south, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, so Casey James goes to woo this girl, and he's like, man, this girl wanted me to romance her. I wasn't going to romance her. Fucking bribe. So I went into the bathroom. I just took my clothes off, and I came back out, and I stuck my cock in her face. And she just looked scared. And then she left. I was like, we well, didn't romance her, man. He's just stuck your dick in her face. I he's doing it justice. Girl walks into a room. He takes his pants off. Here's my dick. Let's suck it. Yeah, anyways, he's, 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 he's a hero of mine. He I is. mean, he's Me fucking too. born 20 years too late. He Casey is. James, fuck. I mean, he talks he's like he's but yeah, he's right? barely smart. Uh, anyways, nah. yeah, so. Casey James, if you're out there, we miss you. What do you got for us? Uh, the four-way ladder match at Armageddon. Oh, yeah. Uh, you guys, Eminem, the Hardys, yeah. and Regal and Taylor. Memories of that match. That was in Virginia? Richmond? Yeah, Richmond, Virginia. Yeah, Virginia. I, I remember I was supposed to go for sliced bread. I was terrified because I knew I couldn't do it. <coughs> and I sure as shit didn't do it. Well, like, we didn't even know. We knew it was, we, we heard it was going to turn into a ladder match, I think. Maybe the day before? Two days before? Mm -hmm. Uh, that it was going to be a four-way ladder match. It was supposed to be yeah. versus Regal and Taylor, right? Yeah, originally, and they made it. They kept that. They kept that look. That that was the match, and then Taylor comes out and he's like, "Hey, player, changing the match. I'll take all your weed and never give any." Oh no! Okay. I, I love Teddy. I do too. He's my dad. That's my dad. I, I love Taylor, even though he never pitches in. But so yeah, that was the match, and then like I got a real treat for you, player. Two more teams. And so, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, but I mean, it, it was exciting, you know. I thought it was really exciting because that was like a whole different platform for us, for us to work on, where neither of us had had an opportunity to show, 
anything to that degree, at least on that platform. And so for me, it was extremely exciting, um, especially since we were going over. <laughs> I had no idea that Mercury got his fucking face. Yeah, I had no like, idea either. No oh, idea. I, I just remember looking around, I was like, someone's missing. Shit didn't happen that like, was supposed to happen. Yeah, it was like, something's missing, like, something's off. And I was like, but everyone covered up for mm -hmm. it. And then, you know. I, yeah, I, I don't know. I I climbed up ladders as fast as I could. Our thing with that match was that, if I can say, when you watch ladder matches in the past, so much of them are are, are structured in like a really spotty set. I mean, it's a spotty type of match, right? But but if you keep the objective of trying to win this title that's held above you. Maybe not. And so as we're going into this match, what we kept thinking, and, and our philosophy still stands today, is like, well, if we do anything with the ladder at this point, unless it's a matter of circumstance in the situation, the ladder's going to be set up for us to climb. Because too many times we'd see, I mean, ladder matches were just a matter of setting stuff up, or it just, and it just was this whole spotty thing. But it's like, well, that takes away from the realism of it. If I, if I have an opportunity in an empty ring, I'm going to set the ladder up and climb it. At least try. I'm not going to set it up in a fucking seesaw and hope that it'll fucking get a great pop and I'm gonna win the fucking match at least that's the illusion I'm gonna portray and so that was our philosophy it was like every time we set this ladder up it's to climb you know and there are other instances where we use it but that's just because it happened to be in that situation you know what I mean uh and so there's a whole psychology of ladder matches I think that has just been washed over by seesaws but we were trying to stick to our formula of like this is a ladder match the only way to get the titles to climb. That's that's what you do. You don't set it up to, you know. It, but it came out exciting, and you know we had, you know, and the Hardys had a lot of experience with ladder matches, so they, you know, they had their input, and we were able to tell the story with Regal and Taylor being afraid of heights. That was a really cool thing. I thought, like, I thought that was really clever and funny because it, it just was a whole different element that you don't see in ladder matches, like the guys that are scared to climb the ladder. <laughs> it was awesome. It's awesome. Um, and you know, and you had Eminem that were an established team. And uh, I thought Merc or I thought, uh, Nitro did a really you know, good job covering up from where he was part and where he had to. And I don't know. I mean, I guess people really seem to respond well to the match. Wouldn't you say? I mean, people like ladder matches. They do. Yeah, they you know, unfortunately, I, you know, I'd like to say, man, I wish I had had more chances to show that we could do stuff like that. But at the same time, it's like, well, I'm kind of glad that was it. It's just that one thing. Like, I don't like that shit. Because then that's it. Like, it'll it'll always be that. But we all went out there and basically killed ourselves to steal the show, and we did. Well, I mean, all eight guys, but we stole it. You know, I can't. I don't think. I don't even know what the other matches in that pay per view. Oh, I couldn't even tell you what pay per view. I was. I think it was Armageddon. So I did it. Were you guys given any uh, direction or instruction as to why the rematch never happened? With the 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 latter match, they were, they announced the second one and then scrapped it like the next week. I don't remember. I mean, I. Oh, no, no, no. They did. Yeah, it was announced did. for another. Well, I think the yeah, February pay per view. Yeah, they did. And then they yeah. changed it. I mean, it's because it's all in a fucking whim. And oh, uh, I didn't say how to Vince that day. Remember? <laughs> that might have been. It. It's 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 just I mean we've got bigger fish to fry I guess I I I, I don't know um, shit changes there daily yeah if it was I mean, they're to, writing this shit to me the day all over of, the fucking you know, show I guess I they're writing this shit the day of I mean I'd heard of instances where I was written all over the show and Vince took a look at it and was like nope not him took me right off you know like I mean I we barely spoke to the writers in in like conversation of like, well, what should we do? You know, because there was a time where we kept trying, we'd, 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 we'd give all these ideas and it was just like, they would, I mean, it was disrespectful at the point where we'd ask them like, well, so what are you guys, so what are we doing? Where are we going? And like, um, Taco Bell? Yeah. Like, that was a legitimate response. That, I mean, that was, that, that's yeah. how they would, that would, that's how they would answer that. So we're sitting here trying to ask about our careers and, and, and our livelihoods and that's how they're going to, you know, so who gave us that response? Fucking Lagana, that yeah. faggot. Where is he now? He's sucking his business card. For crack. In West yeah, Hollywood. I don't have it. No, I sucking a homeless dick. Yeah. Aren't you a guy? Why did he get fired, man? Oh, yeah, he did get, get fired. fired. I, I heard a story. It had something to do with Mortigate, didn't it? You mean, you mean seven? Oh, yeah, seven. 
Uh, Kevin Furtig? Yeah, suck dick for two. Card hard anymore if you can throw it away. Wasn't it he wanted him to make out with him or something, and that was how he was going to get his push, but if he didn't make out with Lugana, he wouldn't get the push? I think it was something like that. Some sort of like sexual molesting, harassment thing, right? That's the story I heard. That's what I heard, too. So, David Lasagna, if you're out there. <laughs> quit molesting gay bodybuilding vampire mortigays. Mm -hmm. That... Should never be arrested anyway. Take them to the Taco Bell, huh? Yeah, take them to Taco Bell yeah. and give them your, your mini jokes. chimichanga fucking. The fucking worst of life. Kill yourself, actually. Uh, no, no, I don't care. Just take just, a burrito and just stay just out of line. <laughs> Oh, an insult to lasagna. I'm sorry. I, mean, I love lasagna. I do too. Y'all made such great I lasagna. I wanted to put pork in that lasagna, but I'm so glad you didn't. Nah. I know you don't like pork and shit. Yeah. Like, I don't want to throw, throw away a half a pound of pork and a half a pound of beef. And yeah, okay. So, uh. It's <laughs> great lasagna. Thank you. How easy is it to get frustrated with the politics and the policies and the people that use them to their advantage? I mean, you know, it's it's it, it, it's all a matter of perspective. It's all up yeah. to you. You know, I, I don't want to. Uh, yeah. You know, it's bad. It's it's a matter of how you take it. If 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 you want to schmooze, you can schmooze. If you want to work out with guys to buddy up to them, you can. If you uh, if you want to be um, me. Sadly, I'm I'm somewhat childish and 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 high schoolish. We're like, ah, fuck you. I'm gonna be stubborn to the point of 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 it being just stupid and and stubborn, you know. And and it bites me in the ass, but I don't care. I like me. Um, but yeah, it's it it. Some people. It, it, does the cream always rise to the top? It, if it sticks around long enough, yeah, I guess it will. You know what I mean? But there's a lot of bullshit floating up top, too. You know what I there, mean? There, I would say, the jizz rises to the top. <laughs> Not so much the cream. It's a form of cream, jizz. But I think the jizz rises to the top there. So that if you can nut on the boss's face, you've, so, you've jizzily cemented yourself rug. on the bearskin rug roster. <laughs> That's probably a roster. <laughs> That's probably a roster. probably pretty good, the bearskin rug. Um, based on your experiences with them, memories of Mercury and Nitro, mm -hmm. memories of, was it a big deal to get the tag titles to you guys? Was yeah, it something you know, that you dug? It's weird, okay, here, here's the deal. I was in Memphis with, with, with Mercury, um, and I liked him. There was a, a, something that happened where um, Bobby Eaton showed up to a, to a house show, and he was a, a trainer. I love Bobby, man. This motherfucker. I heard he's like the nicest guy ever. The nice... like I, I don't think I've ever met him, but I heard he's just amazingly nice. Like, he won't let you pick up a tab or anything. He's um, just... Imagine this. Imagine you're Bobby Eaton, and I'm some dumb fucking 20 year old, 21 year old prick. I'm you're gonna give the... you a knee at the top. Bro. No, there's the, the, the. You're on the apron. There's the oh. ropes right here. I hit the ropes. I'm gonna give him a Hurricane Rana over the ropes, and you take it to the floor. <laughs> And this fucking crazy he person, did it. he was doing it with me, right? <laughs> That's so anyway, awesome. Somebody calls at the office, Bobby Eaton got fired, and I swear to you... It, two. It, two. Oh, thank you, buddy. It, 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 it wasn't me, but the blame got passed towards me. And, and Dragon stuck up for me, and fucking, of course I stuck up for me, but fucking Joey was passing the blame towards me. Um, he's real good at, like, uh, schmoozing up to, to people that... Um, you know, can get him ahead. Um, there was give a him ahead. Or give him, yeah. So we're working, we're working Deuce and Domino. They're making their debut. And, and there's a, a lady that was working there that happened to be standing by and heard him tell them that, uh, just treat them like jobbers. Now, mind, mind you, we're the champs at this point. Just treat them like jobbers, eat them up like anybody else. And this girl comes and tells me, you know, a motherfucker, you know. And that's why these pricks aren't bumping for us. So I run into uh, Joey. He'd been fired about a week later. Um, into a, I run into him in a bar, and uh, yeah, I asked him about it. And oh, well, I was on a lot of pills at the time, man. I don't remember. Uh, so let's just say I did it, dude. If you don't remember, why wouldn't you say you didn't do it? So no, I mean, I, I, Nitro. He's got no spine, but I like him. Mercury, he's a fucking piece of shit. <laughs>
And, and that's that's a shame because I, I part of me likes him, but but yeah. boy, man, time and again, I'm too nice. He's a piece of shit. He's a fucking. He's ultimately he's a piece of shit. And some <laughs> people are. Yeah, when I was talking about Ring of Honor and all the guys were supporting me and being helpful, when I'd broken Chris Marvel's ankle by accident, Joey was one of the first guys that came to me. He was like, "Hey, man, don't, don't, you know, don't let that get you down." He was like, like this brotherly figure. He was really helpful and like it helped me out tremendously. And uh, oh, I'm the asshole. And then we reunited in uh, in in WWE and. And he was cool, but he was just so different. You know what I mean? Like he's just like I could tell he was already well. Like we, I was already up there before he had gotten up, and then he came up with this Eminem deal, and like it was you know the boss was he had a hard on for. He wanted to put the Eminem on the bear rug, and uh, and uh, so they were the hot team, and Joey was like hot shit, and he was banging Alexis Larie, and he was like well, who hadn't seen those pictures, right? <laughs> And, uh, and fucking, uh, so he was all hot shit about her. You know Batista putting those pictures up in the locker room? <laughs> no. Yeah, I really? swear to God, he printed them out and put them in the locker room. I swear to God he did, and it was the funniest fucking thing. It was the funniest <laughs> thing. Yeah. Anyway, But, um, so yeah, he, I mean, so, uh, Joey changed. I mean, he was just, he became a different guy. I mean, I guess it, you blame it on the drugs or whatever you want to fucking blame it yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, don't take responsibility. Yeah. Yeah, don't be accountable. Um, blame it on substances, not yourself. But he's just, yeah, he's just one of these cowards, you know, who's just wanting to schmooze up and be in with the boys. So he thought that was his friend. He's just sour sap, you know, walk around. And the thing I never understood about Joey was like, his bad back. How about his, he had this bad back and his neck. He uh, would walk around talks, like or... a fucking, like, like Sabu looked like he should be you a know what we're gymnast talking about. compared to fucking Joey. The way Joey walked, Sabu looked like sprightly and young compared to the way Joey would walk around. And it was like, what bumps are you taking, I man? That. I love that. I what, love what, that. An atomic drop? What? Oh, what? Yeah. Why are you? And that was it. That was what? It Tom, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't even understand that. So, but yeah, I mean, Nitro was cool because Nitro was always willing to try shit and, and go after shit, and he was extremely athletic, and there's really nothing that he can't do. He's a super nice guy. Super nice super guy. Nice you know, guy. even if he lets guys bang his girlfriend <laughs> and knows about it, and you know, chaperones their date. Weird. Yeah, I mean, he's a nice guy. I, I really I think yeah, I, yeah. I, I never been behind this newer gimmick. I, he's always nitro to me. He's just... Jeff and Matt Hardy. We're gonna have two different takes. I love them, man. And and honestly, um, right before I got released, um, you know, I'd I'd been kind of on the fence about about Matt. I liked him in the past. Um, bad vibes, but for no real reason. He invited me over to his house. And uh, and I walked away feeling like the prick, man. It, he was really gracious. Um, Jeff and I always got along. And and really, I think it's all a matter of circumstance, you know? I don't think there's a good person and a bad person. I think it's just how we're introduced in the interactions. As far as the Hardys go, um, ultimately, yeah, I, I'd have to say I like them, man. They were, they were cool with me, man. I've, I've, I've hung out and drunk and partied with them, and fuck, I, I'd like to hang out and drink and party with them again. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I'll start in chronological order. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was, uh, you know, growing up, obviously I was, uh, you know, I, I was a fan of what they were doing, because I think the first time I really saw them was with, like, Kane or something, and he demolished him. You know, this is like when they were sort of real jobbish, stuff like sunflowers or something on their ties, like something really gay. And uh, I was like, God, these guys are faggy, but I, you know, oh, it I seemed love like, them, man. yeah, right. but I liked yeah, it. And when they awesome. had this like upset win over Kai and Ty and Heat and shit, I was like, oh, this guy's fucking won one. What the, the jobbers do win sometimes. <laughs> you know, what I, mean? I was like, sweet. Um, and uh, and then I saw like Van Dam's match with Jeff, and I was like, and I thought that was cool, uh, and uh, and then fat and I, um, you know, so I'd follow this shit because to me it was like, oh, these you guys that you know, don't so much look like stars, uh, but they're successful and they've they've created quite an amazing following, you know, um, and then and then even getting in, you know, getting 
into WWE, I had, you know, a series of dark matches. Uh, I'm trying to remember the... But I had a series of dark matches. I think my last actual dark match was with Matt. That was the that was it though. That was the big one. And yeah, I, I think remember that's he, went one. To, he went to bat. Yeah, yeah and so he like really did. It was an that awesome one match. really helped me. And he gave me a lot. It was a good match though. Yeah, it was a good match. It was good. He hit me with his finisher twice, and it just made me look stronger. And like I remember Carino pointing that out because you know I was I was still really trying to learn this stuff. At the time. I was like, I don't you know. As long for nobody, man. Yeah, I mean it was yeah. it was cool. I was really thankful for it. I loved it, and and he's you know was very supportive. Um, and then, uh, and he still seemed supportive when I was in OBW, and, and I liked those guys. And I ran into Jeff at um, Ring of Honor, my last Ring of Honor match. Uh, he was recently, he had recently left WWE or whatever, and he was starting a Ring of Honor. And uh, so we just kind of, like, went this transition where I was going there and he was just leaving. Uh, but we always got along. Um, and then, uh, and then in working there with these guys, it was, it was fine. Um, and then, uh, you know, I think just a matter of the atmosphere. When you're in a wrestling atmosphere around a lot of people, um, you know, things tend to, you know, you tend to interact in a lot of different ways, you know. And so, um, you know, one second I'm at a casino getting, you know, mauled by Ashley Massaro, and that leads to a fucking relationship. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I don't know I just, what to I think. So happened to be there, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what I, you know, but I, I'm, and so you know, my understanding is that there was no relationship there anymore, and and I wasn't even aware of that because honestly, to be honest with you, I never thought like I don't know if it was just a bad mindset I had for myself. I mean, the place is really like, unfortunately, I had I had I had gotten to a point where my my confidence had really become diminished. And, and I don't know if it's just a matter of repetition, the same weight, same old shit, uh, where you feel like you're kind of at this level, and then you think that there's like kind of this upper echelon of talent that's like way up here. Well, that's how I considered a lot of those people. So like, the truth is, I never even thought about these people. Um, even Ashley, because she was like their prime girl, right? She just won some contest or something. So none of these people were even in my train of thought, right? So when one of them was almost interacting with me, I was also almost kind of like, wait, you know that like, I'm not looked at as anything valuable in the company, right? Like, you know that I'm, you know, I, I, I mean nothing in this company. You know yeah, that, right? You got a shiny gold belt, man. A shiny gold belt. Put it at brass tacks. Yeah, yeah. I'm not liked in this company for whatever reason. Uh, maybe I'm just too honest, but so that was the situation, and so I'm getting this attention from this, you know, this girl at the time, and it's very appealing, and so, wow, oh, great, and I got kind of carried away with this thing. And then, but then, you know, come to find out there's still all this, 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 like, uh, emotion there and everything, and it's got kind of swiped up into this, this retarded triangle of nonsense, right? Um, but you learn with relationships, and every relationship is like a trial and error, and, um, and so I think that, there was a lot of confusion there, uh, specifically between Matt and I, where, you know, to me it was like, well, I don't buy into the whole thing of like, oh, well, if you dated this girl, it's hands off. And it's like, you know what, if you dig somebody, you dig somebody. Fuck it. If you really care about them, then what makes them happy should ultimately be what makes you happy, even if it's not you. You know what I mean? And he couldn't accept that. You couldn't accept that. But at the same time, you know, uh, I was still fairly young and I had a lot of naive uh, capabilities to me where I was just like, oh, this is so exciting, you know, Playboy, blah, who cares? But, um, you know, it was it was a fun time, but at the same time, I felt like, well, I'm not going to be like some of these other guys, like Nitro, who just knows that his girlfriend's getting banged by, you know, Batista or whatever, and lets it, okay, you know, what can I do about it? And it's like, no, you know, that's how I've always felt. If someone, and I don't know, I don't know if it was a matter of maybe she, of her just lying to me, you know, but from what I understand, you know, they were well over and, and she would tell me all these horrible things about them and, and I would try not to judge them and I'd just be like, hey, you know, well, that's in the past and I'd try and just focus on us. But it seemed to just always be kind of like this thorn in my side, where it was kind of like, God, am I never going to 
hear the end of this guy and like it's just and so it, it was a nasty atmosphere it just created a lot of bad blood that I think stemmed from a lot of uh, miscommunication to the point where there were times when I would have to ask her, like, what are you doing? Like, do you really, do you want this guy or me? Like, make up your goddamn mind, you know? Like, this is, I'm too old for this shit. And, uh, and you would think, you know, I just got strung around a lot. And, and eventually it got to the point where I was like, okay, well, if, then if you want to be with him, then that's fine. If that's what you want, if that's what's going to make you happy, then I'm fine with that. And I went up to him and I specifically said, just stay out of my life. I don't want to have anything to do with either of you. Like, this has been so stressful. Like, I'd rather just not bother. And I mean, I could go into details, but it, it, I, I started to really lose respect for the guy just because I saw how he started to, to treat me as a result of it. Like, he, he's, he, it was just a lot of things that occurred. And I was just like, this isn't the same guy that I thought I liked and thought, I, you know, was cool and... And just the more I heard about him, the more I, I was like, I can't see how people don't see right through this. This is a joke, you know what I mean? Like, and I think that got mixed with a ton of the emotions that I was feeling at the time, just because I was, you know, I'm a pretty passionate person. And when, I, when I'm involved with somebody, you know, I take a lot of pride in it and I'm willing to stand up for them. But when that person's maybe giving me mixed signals and telling me things that aren't true, I mean, it leads me astray. And so I'm kind of just left as this, this guy who's only half filled in on the information, but yet he's trying to to be as honorable as possible. And, you know, like I said, it just created a lot of bad blood and, and a lot of just, it felt like stupid high school nonsense. Um, but the more I heard about him, the more I just didn't like him. Um, and I didn't, I didn't like what I heard about the guy. Uh, and he didn't do anything to prove otherwise to me. He definitely didn't do anything to, to say, oh, no, I'm actually a decent guy. Um, I wish, man, you guys could... Yeah, I mean, it might happen I mean, someday. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, I, mean, I hope it does. I hope you guys can shake hands and but say, I mean, fuck I, it, man, I, shit happens. I, I really do. Out of what little respect there is left, you know, there's things that I just... I, well, I, that'd be great, though, man. It would, it would, it'd be nice. It would, you know, it it's not nice. something that I harbor so much over, and it, it, you know, it used to be something that really bothered me, because it was just like, God, I wish... I'm so I was like I need to expose this guy. He's such a foul person. Um, but then I just stopped caring because it just it wasn't worth it. You know what I mean? But and then to flip over to Jeff, I mean I always liked Jeff. Jeff and I, we had phenomenal chemistry together. I mean we just had, we had a blowout match in, in uh, Mexico City. Fuck! And it was like probably my favorite match, Dude. other than the ladder match I ever had in that company. And I got to be a heel on um, Jeff because we had started this tour in Mexico. And it was funny because the first day of the tour, I didn't work and Brian did. And the last day of the tour, I worked and Brian didn't. But it started off that way because I had a big fucking black eye. Compliments of Bob Holly. Because I got to the gym before he did. <laughs> and I finished before he did. Right. And I made grunting sounds. So he punched me in the face. Attention. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, we did it. We had worked Cody and Bob before, before going to Mexico. And... A spot I like to do where I lay on my feet and turn around. We were healing it up a little bit at the time. I was like, hey, and like, why don't you just punch me, Bob? I was like, yeah, I like that. And he punched me. But don't really a, punch me, a fucking, Bob. Like, this is the biggest fucking black eye. But I love Bob, so I didn't care. And I was like, ah. and, and he just liked me even more for not bitching about it. it was, it's wrestling. It's not fucking ballet. You hear that all the time. It's true. So they were like, we'll flip a coin, guys. And I won the coin toss. I was like, ah, I guess you're working. And, uh, so Charlie Austin, yeah, yeah, we don't need to get into the details. Yeah, no details there. So he worked, he worked the first night and I didn't, but then we did Boy, the, what a match. That's a heart stopper. <laughs> and, uh, we did the whole tour, and then we were working Cody and Bob the whole, uh, tour. And, like, the second to last night, Brian hurt his foot pretty bad somehow. I don't even remember how that happened. Yeah, yeah I, I fucking, I, I, it was a nerve on the top, and it just swolled up. And fuck, I couldn't stand it. That's, Mar that's when Martha was going to help me out and went Who's sightseeing. Who's Martha? Well, Dr. Martha. Oh, yeah, his wife. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. Doc's wife. Right. Not Doc's wife. The other lady, the new lady, Martha, who was going to who's gonna go, um, she went sightseeing in D.C. instead of uh, setting up. Anyways, fuck it. Who cares? Oh, I liked yeah. her. Um, 
Thanks, Mark. And it was my my foot was fucked up, so Paul worked worked Jeff Hardy, and and I'm gonna interrupt him. The match was fucking incredible, and the way they had it set up, it was a slow ba boom, ba boom, ba boom finish. When they get back, Dean Malenko says, and we're all sitting in chairs like this. Well, yeah, it was a good match, but you know you could have made the match more sudden. And I and I don't know if you remember me saying this, but I said it for everybody. Dean, what the fuck was wrong with that match? <laughs> I do remember oh, that. Yeah, you, I did. And he was my, and I could have gotten shit, but fuck it. What the fuck was wrong with that match? Yeah. That match was amazing. Everybody was going crazy. There was nothing wrong with that match. Some motherfuckers want to critique something because it justifies their job. That match was incredible. That's the best thanks, match man. I've seen hey, you thanks. or Jeff had. That match was hey, fucking thanks. unreal. Next it was, all, it was yeah. fun. It was like a highlight for me. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, we're going to Jeff's so That was easy. awesome, man. So easy, because he's so over, too, so that's so easy, you know, to do any kind of healer shit and get a reaction, but I mean, it, we just had good chemistry, we always have, even teaming with them is fun, you know what I mean, because we did a lot of six-man stuff with Jeff, uh, where we had a lot of great, great matches, with, I think we did a pay-per-view, uh, mm -hmm. us and Jeff against Caden Murdoch and Kennedy, we yeah, did a yeah, six-man with us against Caden Murdoch and Benjamin, uh, and so they teamed us with Jeff fairly often. I think they saw there was a lot of relation there as far as styles and stuff He's like got that. some sort of magic, man. He's just yeah. over, man. Awesome. I, lo I loved him when I saw him as a kid. He's just yeah. fucking, he's just got it. Man. Yeah. He's awesome. No, he's yeah. definitely, definitely a cool fucking guy. Yeah. Um, but, you know, and then to wrap it all up, I mean, you know, definitely an influential tag team. Take from them what I did and take from them what I could learn from. Uh, definitely have, you know, things that I don't like about their matches, and, and, and I think I alluded to that in the ladder match explanation, where it's like, well, when I think about it, no, we'll climb these ladders, we don't need to set them up to get pops for ourselves. I'll agree with that, I, 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 the Hardys are awesome, the, what I would rather be instead of the Hardys is, is um, psychologically different. Yeah, much. I want much the different. belt, That's, yeah. and, and I'm going to base the psychology around me wanting that belt, and you can bump me on my way to the belt, but I'm going for that fucking belt. I'm not setting up the ladder outside the ring. I'm not setting it in the corner. I'm setting it up on the belt. And that's, I guess, the difference. But, man, they're fucking... I love them. They're awesome, man. And uh, who sold more merch? Well, fuck them. More Mysterio. Than anybody, man. Well, Mysterio, but yeah. But them, they, we, we sold 11 shirts. They Harry sold Batista. a gazillion. So, yeah. They're awesome. We sold 11, really? Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> my mom bought nine of them. <laughs> and I bought two of them. Mm. <laughs> uh, Haas and Benjamin. Um, I've known Charlie, um, I'm trying to think since when, 2000, 2000, 2001 in Memphis. Um, Benjamin, I met uh, a few years after, a little bit here and there. Um, fuck, I don't know, I like him. You know, um, 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 I'd love to see him in TNA. I'm doing a little bit of stuff there now, and fuck, I'd, I don't know, I, I like the guys. Yeah, there was, I don't know, I mean, sometimes it's a little bit of a headache to put masses together with them, just because, you know, they took their uh, collegiate accolades too seriously sometimes, so they just be like, hey, we'll come here and just, we're wrestlers. There's no way you could do that on us. We're wrestlers. No way. I mean, mm. but there's not ropes in collegiate wrestling. There's so, not, I mean, there certainly ain't turnbuckles. Yeah. You know, I think they took themselves a little too seriously and whatever. But I always had fun working with both of them, either individually or in a tag situation. It was always pretty easy, you know? Like, it was always fun to do. And Charlie might rip your shoulder out in an arm drag. Though. Yeah, Charlie is. Ooh, he's fucking. I mean, he's like, oh, a lot. I like Charlie. But yeah, I love like, Charlie. He's just like an intense. Intense as it gets, yeah. Because intensity is dangerous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, fucking Charlie. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I like, I like, I like uh, Haas and Benjamin for sure. Caden Murdoch. I broke in with Cade, you know. Um, Murdoch, um, had a slapping incident with him. Oh yeah, he he likes to slap people about in the back or something. Like. He'd like to slap guys in the stomach, in the back, and you it's know, like he, fat guy chops. Yeah, like Bubba Dudley does that kind of gay shit. It's like fat guy chops. And like, um, he you're pulled, too unathletic to chop regular, you just chop the stomach. 
He pulled that shit with me once without telling me, bam, 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 and I was fucking livid after match in Mexico. And stormed out afterwards, and, and you know, he tried to act tough, and like, you know, I was, I was pissed, man. Motherfucker, you don't, this is bullshit. Um, you do it again, I'm gonna slap you in the face, sort of deal. And we, we you know, it wasn't like, ah, I'm blowing up to him. We, we discussed it, but, but dude, you don't slap me here. You do that, I'm gonna slap you here. And, uh... Fuck, next time he slapped me on the stomach, it was on TV, and I started slapping the shit out of his face, man. And I and I like Murdoch, I like Cade, they both been over to my place, man, I, I like him. Um, I, that's the only story I got. I, I, you know, Murdoch slapped me in the belly, I slapped him in the face like a, like a little bitch. <laughs> Ta-da. We were lobbying to work with those guys for a while, because they were on Raw, they were like the Raw. We had awesome team. matches with them, man. Yeah, and awesome we were matches, down. I thought. Yeah, so we were we were really trying to get over to work with them, whether bringing them to SmackDown or going to Raw, and when we started working on them, it was just mm, initially there was like a feeling out process, you know, but keeping the belts warm for us though. Oh, is that what you said? You remember that you told me about that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks for keeping them warm for oh. us. Oh, in South Africa. Yeah, like, come on, it's just like fucker. like I don't know. Thing is, like certain guys get up. Uh, you know, when guys get on TV or they start making some money, I mean, they're gonna think that they, you know, they're gonna start taking things for granted and start getting this kind of delusional attitude. And Murdoch would drift there more than, than Lance would. Uh, but Murdoch's also a lot more country than, than Lance, and so. Yeah, and I do like them both. I like them both. They, a can, lot. they can, they're welcome over my place anytime. Um, yeah, yeah, just like real easy. Really easy, excellent chemistry, safe. I mean, it was fun to work with. Yeah. It was actually a shame we didn't really get to do more, like, like develop more stuff. Well, we, we 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 ran in one day, and and, and beat them up, and then because uh, they were beating up Triple H, if you remember, <laughs> and then uh, we we got them scrambling out of the ring, and then uh, Triple H went to shake our hands. And then kicked one of us, I don't remember who, first in the belly. Faggot. And the other one just stood there in, in, in place. And we both took pedigrees. And Paul kept insisting, when are we going to get a revenge? And week after week. I don't know if you went to Michael Hayes, different agents. Oh when are we going to get a revenge? When are we going to get a revenge? Basically, we just look like pussies. You just pussies. Like get beat up. Pussies. You don't have any issue with it. It was so pussies. frustrating. Especially because that fucking tool terrorizing. He fucking came up to us. Uh before the show and he was like hey guys um i just want you to know this is indeed a camel toe and uh, he said uh I just Wait, want, he, goes, he, he did say something he though. comes up to us he goes oh i looked on the tv sheet and uh, well, this is what the office wants, got, this is what the office wants it, it's kevin dunn that's what Kevin Dunn wants. I mean, you know, I, I had nothing the, to do I'm with it. I'm the bear skin. I, I, mean, I had nothing uh, to do yeah. with it. That wasn't Vince's dick in my mouth. It was Stephanie's and Shane's. It was a DP in my mouth. That's the real pedigree. Double pedigree. That's what DP stands for. And, uh... Jesus GDP, Christ. though, man, does G yoga in my front grass. Fucking awesome. You know that, right? Yeah. I told you about that. Devil's Rejects is way better than mm. fucking Hard on Hustle with Eyes and Corpses. Oh, no comparison. And DDP that has shit. a little bit of ability to be the reason why that's better. Devil's Rejects Amongst other things, but is, 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 awesome. a, is a legitimately like awesome horror movie. Yeah, it's badass. Yeah, Thousand Corpses sucks, cock. Yeah, yeah I was try trying too hard. To what other things. horror movies you want to talk about there? The Undertaker. They're making an Undertaker movie. Are they really? I heard it. Dude, dude, when I saw him on fire, I, I thought... <laughs> was, <laughs> How awesome was that? Who's so the powers? He can't even put out fire on his own. We were... No, no, no. I was with Jordan. Gonna meet you. I was with my buddy Knuckles um, at, at Hamburger Habit off of Pico in LA. Really and good. we were watching... And this shit is on CNN. Well, we're eating fucking hamburgers. This motherfucker... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're eating fucking hamburgers. I was in heaven, man. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. How many anyway. lives does he have left? <laughs> uh, I don't know. There was some really good Undertaker, and there was some Undertaker who was just kind of like, huh? Is this the same guy? 
Right. He, the, the, the weird thing was the way people would um, act around him. You know what I mean? The, the, the change of behavior because um, obviously he's an authority figure. He's been around, you know, he, he carries some clout. Um, and people who you might be riding with and might be boys with would fucking turn around and to him thinking they might scoot up a little bit. Oh, that's disgusting. And, and I can't blame it on him. Well, but but at the same time, he was listening to he it. He relishes that, I think. You know, I I didn't like the I didn't like the way people behaved around him. For I didn't like sure. being dragged in my fucking room at three in the goddamn morning in Australia to come downstairs to fucking look at all these grown old fucks act as courtroom and have wrestlers court. In a fucking oh, uh, in a, oh, in, what you in want? A, in a ballroom of the hotel lobby, we're on the end of an Australian tour. Don't drag me in my goddamn room at three thirty, four in the morning to come watch Undertaker act as a judge, act as Judge Judy, to fucking picture work. this. Oh my god! You're working, you're working Eminem for a whole loop, and it's going good. New Zealand. Fucking the best houses you've ever worked in front of. Yeah. Um, Australia, bam, 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 awesome tour. And the valet for him is on court for not fucking shaking hands or some bullshit that goes on in the women's locker room. There's a ton of other shit too, like making passes at Ben Wong. Who knows, no, man? But we have to fucking bet. We're forced down there. We have to bet at what time is the girl who's on trial going to cry at? We're picking, we're picking times I say, uh, one second, I lose. That's disgusting. My buddy it's says like, ten minutes, uh, he fucking wins! He fucking wins and doesn't want to fucking win! Oh, that's so bad. It's disgusting. You're seeing this girl, like, getting raked across the coals with all their friends who are now coming out because everyone's watching this. Oh, it's so, I mean, it's it's like that where it's like, I like the girl, and I know you do too. She's yeah, a nice girl. Yeah, I got it over the down, as you can see, and like, you know, and so... I just think, cosmo, actually, as an aesthetic dentition. <laughs> um. <laughs> but, I, you know, so there's elements of that. Personally, I'm not a fan of people who love themselves. Like, I love myself, but it's because I know what I'm made of. I don't need to tell everybody else. What are you else. made of? I'm made of a lot me? of good SpaghettiOs. Can you give me a little taste and out of the spaghetti. What are you made of, Paul? It's like a crystalline orange that glows. Except it has almost a green hue like this. That's because that orange is blazed. You have no idea what your hair looks like right now. No, it's, yeah, you do. It looks like jizz. No, it doesn't. It's waving. I put jizz it's in magical. My hair. Jizz makes your hair strong. Uh, but I'm, I'm just not a fan for people who wear their own merchandise. I'm not a fan for people who, you know put, uh, you know, dead man on their license plates when they drive around the town that they live in, because I have to live in the same town as him. It's my town, motherfucker, and I do worse. I've been there a lot longer than you, old man. Born and raised, motherfucker. Jesus Christ. You don't know what weird is, motherfucker. I'll kill you for real. <laughs> All that I know is it's going to light you on fire. Let's your witness. Fire. Yeah. You got any questions for us? <laughs> Randy Orton. Love Randy. Yeah, me too, man. We've had some fucking funny stories. One man. of my favorite people. Oh. Um, Actually, if I could see a crossover star into uh, like another rock type into, say, entertainment, like acting or whatever. Um, as far as like show busy acting, I can see Randy being that guy because he just has so many natural talents. But I don't think that would happen just because I know how much he loves wrestling. But, I mean, just like, he's a pretty flawless performer. I mean, the guy's... He's your next Shawn Michaels, yeah. man. He's your, he, he gets it. He feels it. Yeah, he's a pretty, pretty phenomenal guy. Yeah. Hey, he, he, and, and the agents fucking love him. Yeah, they're they, all these walking guys around understand his stains yeah. and their shorts and shit. And they're just like, oh, I just jerked off to Randy's picture. Well, I mean... Like, I, like I, interesting. You respect Arn, I respect, we respect, and they all fucking, 
They know he's good. Yeah. We know he's good. Well, he's a franchise he's awesome. guy. He's a franchise like he, guy. Him and Cena. He can, franchise guy. He can do this and make it something. No, Randy's awesome, yeah. yeah. And we've had a lot of fucking fun <laughs> in, 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 in Mexico yeah. and South America. Oh, God. Yeah, we, we've had Dynamite. And and um, um I'm surprised uh, we haven't been arrested. What was Randy that band? <laughs> what was that band? Um, um band? in South uh, South Africa. Um, I'm all out of love. Uh, air supply. Oh, air supply. Yeah, you yeah, pissed yeah. on them. Kind, kind of. of. Yeah. Kind of. There was an incident when we were in South Africa, and we were working Caden Murdoch. That was a feud we had. And we were all. It was like towards the end of the tour. We were the champions. Yeah, we were the, yeah. Yeah, we were the champions. We, we, we were, were the keeping them warm. We were the raw champs, keeping them warm, Murdoch. Doesn't contribute to the pile either. Unless it's Mexican dirt weed. Doesn't count. <laughs> it's the luckiest thing yeah. in your life. Oh, God. It'd be a human tornado in here. <laughs> to have some how he kills about Murdoch. <laughs> and, uh... So we were in South Africa, and everyone came into... Like, for some reason, even though I knew that the <laughs> office hated me, I would always get these, like, really pimped out rooms on the road, like, in international tours. Everyone would be like, hey, man, what room are you in? I'm like, yeah, we, they're like, we're in this, we were in 201. I'm, like, I'm like, oh, I'm over, like, in the Paradise Suite, man. Like, what do you, t- like, I think they thought I was, like, Paul Levesque or something. Unfortunately, <laughs> my name sounds similar to that almost. And, uh, and, like, and so I always had these pimped out rooms. Anyway, so everyone would meet in my room where you catch a burn or whatever. And so it was me and Brian and Cade Murdoch and Randy and Robbie. Robbie McAllister. Robbie right? McAllister was fucking cool as yeah, shit, man. Cool, man. I do like the Highlanders. I do like yeah. that. Man. Robbie was cool as fuck. Yeah, really man. cool. <laughs> they were. And he voted no. Yeah, so we yeah, voted so, no. I guess Air Supply was staying in our hotel. And uh In like, South Africa, mind you. Because we're also they gonna play it. <laughs> and uh and like so we look out the window because we hear a lot of commotion and Cena's out there with all the other schmoozers, right? And they all just wanted to be around top guys. Because that's what happens. And so they're all at the table, basically outside my window, where the pool area is. And, uh... They're, they're, uh we're up 8th floor. Yeah. They're maybe 20 feet down that way, from the 8th floor. So it's, They were right below, but they were inside. But they were, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a couple windows that opened, but there was one prominently kind of in that area. And... So, you know, at least they were pretty elevated mentally at that point, and, um, so, I think it was just <laughs> as simple as you wanted to take a piss out the window? Yeah, I wanted to try to see if I could piss on him from there. Yeah! yeah. And he, and that was all it was. Brian had bought yeah, Sheena's like, latest rap album and didn't approve of it, so he wanted to piss on him. And that's another guy, I can't say enough good things yeah, about him. I really like John. But yes. I wanted to piss on him, because I think he might think it was funny. Yeah, you know, and I know I would think it was funny, so I wanted to piss on him and whatever nerds he was hanging out with. But it was a little windy, and so the wind carried the piss over <laughs> onto Air Supply instead, who was sitting nearby. But Where that's the story. That? In actuality, it hit the hotel management. Oh, that's who it hit. I didn't know that. The story was Air Supply. I pissed on I pissed on the hotel management. <laughs> And that's when they threatened to call the cops. Yeah, we showed up in the next morning and they were like, the schematics uh, points to your room. And uh, I'm like, schematics? How do you even spell that? I bet you can't. And yeah. They, uh, yeah, but it all smoothed over. Yeah, it was. Anyways, it was the squirt that out the star floor. Stroke. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know, did, did Cody suck air? Air Supply's dick, you think? I think he did. I think did he Air got... Supply suck Cody's I think, dick? Yeah, I think it's. I, I don't think it think was so. a threesome. But it could have happened. No, I think it was a threesome. Was I think a, Cody yeah. was trying to show him the yoga he had learned from DDP. Bang, who and does it in my front fucking yard, yeah, man? That's right. It's pretty. It's true. Mm hmm. Yeah, but Cody's on the bear rug, I think. <laughs> no. I think so. No. I think Dusty owns his own bear rug. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> What do you got for him? Sit, sit, on the, sit on the bear rug, baby. What about him? Uh, thoughts on him, Back interactions Batista. with him over the years? He, he's been nice to me, I man. Really he's like jacked. Dave, to be honest yeah. with you, yeah, Dave's he's, never been He's super jacked, cool. he's super cool. He's got an awesome motorcycle. I know that much. He's always been really cool to us. I don't know I if know, there'd be times when, I remember specifically, we were out in Washington, D.C. I don't know if we were on, I think we were on separate shows at this point, but. Where he would throw parties? 
Well, yeah, because he was like from the Baltimore, Washington area. Ooh. But I just remember like he'd always had these. After we wrestled at the uh, MCI Center, whatever it was called in DC, he'd always have a party like at a club nearby and just like pick up like the tab for everybody. And it was just like retarded. dude, he would do that on any time you went out. Yeah, with I mean, him. yeah, it's true. I mean, but he's just. So he was a good dude. Uh, you know what it was, and 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 he said it, and Cena said it. Um, it's just a matter of, and and Randy would always pick up the tab too. They'd yeah. be real sneaky about it. They'd pick up the tab, and it was a matter of of. Um, they know they get paid a lot more, and they know they're wrestling, and we're wrestling, and they know that they need an undercard, but at the same time, I mean, they don't. They, we could be anybody, but dude. All the top guys there were real cool. Young guys too. I mean, uh, I wouldn't say all the time. No, but but John, and Batista, yeah. and Randy would fucking. You go out to eat. That's true. They pick up the tab even if you weren't sitting at the same table. Man, I mean, yeah, cool guys. Yeah. And why even? Dude, I mean, a, lo you know, a lot, of, a lot of wrestlers I learned that. Benoit, just actually. I did too, I got man. Him a lot. I did too. He was crazy. He was. But. Threatened to give me cauliflower ears one time. Hey. How about, was, oh, how yes. about Montreal? How about Hooters? Did I ever tell you that? I thought, so we were in Buffalo, New York, and uh, I was riding with Jamie and Brian, or Jamie and Chris at the time. Brian, I think, had already had just left, like, not too long ago. <laughs> probably got the fuck out of there by then. And we were in, uh, we were in Buffalo, and so we're driving to the hotel, but Chris was hungry, so I was like, let's go to Hooters, and... I think it was like already 11.30. They were closed and they only have like one table left in there. And they're closing the door and he like sticks his foot, sticks his foot in there and he's like, still open. And so he kind of forces us in there as just he and myself and Jamie and we go and sit down. This other table behind us has kind of been real raucous and everything and they're like giving the waitress a hard time. He's like, those motherfuckers are irritating me. I'm like, oh yeah, they're kind of loud. And he's like, you should go do something about it. You should go yeah. do something about it. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah. you mild mannered. Yeah, girl. yeah. You with the, with the blue tights and the white spermy juice. <laughs> and uh, it's like, it's like okay. And so I go over to this table. I'm like, hey guys, uh, can I keep it down a little bit? He's gonna get you know, uh, my buddies here. We're tired, and uh, also you're kind of giving the girl a hard time, guys. I mean, just chill out. Yeah. Well, sorry, man. We giving you a hard time too. I'm like, well, hey, man. Just you know, just saying. Just being a little loud. My friends are getting kind of irritated. Like, why don't your friends come and say something? And like, then they looked over and like, I, they they quieted down. I was like, well, hey, look, man. Just so he's like, no, no, no. I was like, we've been rude to the girl. You know, I was trying to like pull whatever this defense was out of my ass. And then they were like, oh, right, no, that's cool, that's cool. And like, so we're going to sit down. And then they come over and they're like ready to give it. Like, hey, we just wanted to say no offense. Oh man, Chris Benoit! Man! He, like puts like this and the second he puts his hand on his shoulder, Chris just goes, get your fucking hand off. No, <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, no disrespect, man. Like he's just like he's like in this zone. It was insane. You know, I did the same thing to sign guy. Oh, he did it at a Hooters. He put his hands on, ah, hey, you were up, buddies. Get your fucking <laughs> hands off of me. <laughs> so I get it. I it's get it. Great. I love yeah. it. Fuck him. So then these guys leave and the girl comes up and she's like, oh, hey, you didn't have to do that. That was really nice. And I'm like, oh, you didn't have to do that, you know. And, uh, and so then she goes and puts her order in and everything and they're like, okay, it's set. You're gonna fuck this girl. <laughs> You're gonna fuck her. And we're gonna watch from the closet and jerk off. And I was like, what in the fuck did I get myself into? What? I was stepped in like the Canadian Twilight Zone or something. Like, I didn't understand what the fuck was going on. And uh, and Jamie goes to the bathroom. I'm like, Chris, man, like I, I have a girlfriend. Like at the time, I was like, I, it's not really my thing, man. And he's like, no, no, you don't have to do anything. No, it, I'm, yeah, I know, I know, it's cool. And then Jamie shows me, goes, no, you're gonna fuck her. And the we're gonna watch and jerk off in the club. He, he doesn't have cauliflower ears. We should we should rough him up. And, I was just like, this is getting a little homoerotic <laughs> for my taste. I'm not really into this kind of thing, guys. And um, But yeah, we still rode together. <laughs> I just would get my own room because it was safe. And uh, but yeah, it was really, it, it was interesting riding with Chris. I mean, it was real intense. 
but he always was willing to give advice, you know what I mean? He was like, you need to fight back more, you need to, you know, pick your points to fight back, and just really invested a lot of time in Brian and I. But I was getting that earlier, uh, was there was a time when we were finishing up a tour in Zurich, uh, Switzerland, and that was the last stop. And we were, you know, we were at the bar and drinking and stuff like that, and I remember Chris came up to me, and he said, uh, he said, you and Brian, that's what's gonna make money here in the years to come. I was like, well, you know, we're trying something. He goes, no, 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 against each other. He was like, that's what the future of this company is, is you guys against each other. That's going to be the future of the ages. And I was like, wow, thanks, you know? And like, I mean, he was just like extremely uh, respectful of, of the fact that we had tried to go about, you know, our careers in a similar fashion that he had and Benoit had, you know, going to Japan and just trying to make your way out there. Um, so, I don't know, Chris really always took an investment in us, you know, he always always uh, tried to keep us on track, I think, to be what he thought was ideal. What's that say about us? That we're not crazy? Fuck, he was awesome, though. Yeah, he was. Fuck I mean, it, man. Was... I mean, the intensity. It, it, it was, I mean, it it was, was yeah. I mean, when that guy would tell you that he really liked what you did, I mean, that would make up... Like, honestly, that's what, has, that's what gave me a lot of longevity, was the respect I gained from peers that I respected. Because when you're rejected by the office that you're trying so hard to please, every night you're just rejected nonstop in a disrespectful way too. You know, real condescending uh, relations. To get a compliment from someone like a Benoit or a Steamboat or you know the guys that are actively working, and it was Benoit at the time. I mean, that would just smooth all. It would be like, okay, this was worth it. You know. And all that disrespect that you would get from the office and all that bullshit wouldn't even matter because it was like, I got this guy's respect, that's above anything, you know? Um, so, but, we were, I wasn't surprised with, you know, what happened. Oh, are you shitting me? I was sitting this far, if you were Jimmy Yang, from Jimmy Yang, and when the hysterics happened, I looked over at Jimmy and and that was it. We knew what fucking happened. Was that before or after you heard Matt Stryker go, No! Oh, come on, man. People, it, it, so happens. Your it happens every day. It's down there, isn't it? You know, I mean, shit happens, man. I mean, I really hope I don't kill my wife. I, I really, really hope we don't have kids first and I kill her and them. I mean, fuck. No, and I'm sure if you would have asked him ten years in advance, fuck, no, I don't want to to have a wife and kids and kill them? Nobody wants to, but in a week in advance. You know, what yeah, fucking no, shit no. happens, man? I mean, he actually called me uh, about two weeks before that about, I went down. About the dogs? Yeah, <laughs> come on, don't be a dick. No, You're an asshole. No, he, no, no, he called me, uh, I would say about two weeks before that went down to check on my mental stability, to check on how I was holding up, because I'd had a rough patch there for a while, I was coming back from an injury, and I was just like having really shit match after shit match, and I was just like frustrating, and I was just getting really depleted. My confidence was just like, what the fuck? I can't get out of this funk, and I was walking around really just like, ah. And so guys were like pulling me aside, and like, hey man, what are you on? I'm like, nothing. I'm just this sucks. This fucking, I don't, you know. And, mm -hmm. and they were like, okay, well you just need to keep your smile. You know, because that's the game. Be phony, be fun. Um, but then Ben Wallace calling me at my house and was like, I just wanted to check on you. So it was like weird. I'm okay, I'm fine. And then two weeks later, all I had was like, uh, I'll tell you though, he bizarre. loved the Bible and they all love the Bible, huh? Isn't that spooky? Born again, yeah, um, yeah. Born again, kill again, dragons and dragons. Yeah. No, they didn't play with dice. Chris did. He's a big RPG guy, yeah. Really? What yeah. games did he play? Final Fantasy? Magic. Did he really? Pokemon, yeah. He was really He's a Pokemon yeah, guy? I love Pokemon. Oh, he yeah. Pikachu. No, he really did. Yeah. Damn. Who did Sandcastle Maker, too? He didn't go to Portland. And it wasn't Portland. Where was it in Oregon? Where they have the Sandcastle Festival? Astoria. Really? Yeah. Home yeah. of the Goonies. He never went though. He's not that good. No. No. Sloth would never. <laughs> he, wait. He wasn't that good. <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, he'll ne he'll never make a sand castle again. Not in that physical form. No. A uh, couple of things we'll touch on. We haven't we'll touched on it. Yeah. Touch it. Yeah. Top, couple Somewhere big things. George Lopez yeah. certainly. Uh, 
Paul Memory. Billy <laughs> Jack Hayes. Uh, Benoit. <laughs> Vince was the father. Fuck them all. Oh, come on. You got that for me, right? He doesn't even know what I'm talking about. He does, but he doesn't. That's fucking genius. Bombshell tonight. You, <laughs> I got appetizers. Fire, fire. Do you guys know, like, the fucking genius, right? Yeah. I love it. Uh, okay. Okay, I'm, I'm done jerking you guys off, but I love it. I love it. I haven't even started. He'll jerk you off once he sees it. Yeah. <laughs> the camera stopped moving. <laughs> A uh, couple things we haven't touched on yet. Paul, uh, memories of teaming with Billy Kidman. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I liked Kidman when I was watching WCW when I was growing up. Like I was like, oh, he's another guy I can relate with. He's about my size. And if I could grow into being a pro wrestler, I could see myself going into the mold of this guy. And like, it'd be someone I really, oh, thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. Get yourself one. I got one right here. Cheers, yo. Uh, he's a guy I can relate with. My size, my, I really like the style. I mean, I saw him do the shooting star before I saw Jushin Liger do it. You know, I, I, Jushin Liger, I just had reference because I'd heard he was the first one to actually attempt it, so. Was he really, though? That's, what I, that. was he really That's what I understood, yeah. Um, so, I, 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 I thought Kidman was awesome, you know what I mean? Uh, and, and, you know, and then I, 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 I followed him when he was in WWE for a bit, you know, he had like the invasion match and stuff, and I was like, ah, oh, this is cool, and it was cool, you know. Um, got to WWE, I was teaming with Brian, that was good as, I was like, this is awesome, good team with my best friend, everything's great. He had to leave for, you know, he just wasn't, you know, he, he needed to go clear his head and go do his own thing for a bit and refresh, and that was totally understandable. I was fairly new at the time, so I was like, well, fuck, I'll stick around. So then it just got to a matter of like, oh, well, these guys both have dark hair, and it's kind of short, and like, they, 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 they do similar stuff, stuff. Yeah, they do yeah. similar stuff, kind of flippy stuff, let's put these guys together and see what happens, and, I mean, it was flattering, it was cool, because for me, it was my first taste of success. No, 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 no. Let, I hate to cut you off. No, please. Um, there was a point where we did a match, and, and Paul just did a, uh, a shooting star, I think it was oh, against, yeah, I, think back. It was, I think it was against Matt, it was and, Matt and, and, Shannon. and Shannon. Yeah, Madison Square Garden, yeah. actually, yeah. Yeah. my first house shows. shows. And, uh, you know, boom, I hit him with the something, I go down to all fours, Paul comes off shooting the star, um, and this motherfucker, you know, decides to make an issue, of all places, in Gorilla. And I remember Paul sticking up for himself, and saying something about, in, you know, inventing the headlock. Or, you know, oh, okay. Well. He goes, hey, man, what, are you going to steal my move? you going to steal my move every night? Mm. Or something like that? And he wasn't even doing the shooting star anymore, right? And I was like, what did it say? It was, like, uh, it was something about the clothesline or the headlock or whatever. But he called them out on his shit, man. He just, did. Yeah, it was just, you know. Because I, you know, I've always felt like mine was... It you weren't trying to fuck the motherfucker, nah. man. Hell no. No nah, way you nah. were. I was just trying to do my thing, get, my, get, my, get myself seen. But, you know, so they eventually teamed us up. And it was it was what it was. I, I felt like he wasn't really into it because I felt like he knew that they weren't really interested in him. And they were just kind of throwing him whatever they could. Whereas with me, it was like, oh, he's new. Let's throw him what we can. Or let's throw him this. We're not doing anything with Kidman. Let's throw him together. And, uh... And where I had hoped that it had been kind of more of a mentoring situation, it turned out to be just kind of like more of like uh, good cop, bad cop. Like, not so, and that's not even really a real analogy. Just like, we were cool when we was just he and I, we put any of the other boys in the room and he just bury me or like put himself over my expense. How and, common is that, man? It's so common. The way personalities so change oh, it's with disgusting. the other personalities in the room. It's disgusting. You put one other personality in this room and another personality will change. It's you disgusting. take them out of the yeah. room and oh, I'm a nice guy now. It, it sucks. sucks. It's yeah, fucked. It sucks. Yeah, it's fucked. And I mean, there was a big age difference, you know what I mean? And, and we didn't talk, you know, outside of matches or anything like that. And he's married and, and this and that. And I got along with Tori and everything was cool. I mean, and I told him, you know, I never, I never was like, hey, maybe I should do the shooting stuff. Like, it was never an issue. I just, out of respect, I was like, hey, you know, I'll do it whenever I'm allowed to do it. And, uh, but I, I think I just kind of got fed up with like are we a team or are we, or what you know what i mean like are we a team or what are you gonna stand up for me or are you gonna throw me into the bus 
make your fucking pick your side. And I, I kind of got fed up with it. And and even when, it, I mean, when we started having this feud with the Dudleys, to me, which was really fascinating, because it was your guys I had watched on TV again. And I was like, oh, these guys are real storied tag team. Even though I don't think that's the case anymore. <laughs> Um, but still, man, they but still, it's shit. phenomenal. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah man. and they've done all these TLC matches. Then I was like, "Fuck yeah, I get to be in the ring with these guys." Fuck yeah, and so I, where I'd hoped that Kidman would have stood up for me as a tag partner, he just would. He would save his own ass most often than not. And and Bubba had an issue with me for whatever reason. I think he just he was trying to test me or didn't like this new kid coming in or whatever. And I was I was trying to hold my own because I wasn't gonna let this fucking guy walk over me. You know, I knew better than that. And we had matches at times where he would take his fucking belt off after the show or after the match and just start whipping me without telling me and, and shit like that I just don't think is whatever. If you're gonna hit me with the fucking belt, the belt buckle, you're a fucking faggot if you're mm -hmm. gonna tell me about that. Mm -hmm. That's just not cool in my opinion. When the camera's not even rolling. No, that's uh, that's that's flat out low. The camera's not even nobody, rolling. Nobody's, 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 get, nobody's, getting, over, Cause, nobody's cause, getting over, man. Nobody's getting over. They slow. put us over, you guys. Are you that big of a fucking bitch? And I just found Bubba to be a real political fucking baby. He's a real pussy. You know what I mean? And there came a point when I stiffed the fuck out of him, and I show up in Canada, and he just fell and fat fa fucking flop out on the on the floor and just laid there. And the whole match changed. Because that's the way bullies work. I you just, fucking oh hit them in the face and they're done. I formed the Bully. fuck out of him. And he just flopped over and <laughs> fell on the floor and just stayed there for the rest of the match. Like, the way <laughs> just like, improvised his finish and shit. And it was like, and after the, afterwards, it was like, hey, where were you, man? Where was the... F and he was like, oh, well, I just, you know, I was, I was kind of, I was on that side getting my breath. And I was just like... And then Kidman, and he was like, hey, man, you hit me kind of stiff. And, and that was the one time Pete stood up and was like, oh, maybe he meant to hit you. And he goes, oh, yeah, kid, you think you got your stripes to hit me? And I was like, I don't know. You know, and he's like, oh, we'll see, we'll see. But they, it's just all talk, you know. d was always cool, but he was just kind of like Bubba's little yes man. And uh, I think Devon's cool as fuck. He's cool he as shit. He's just floating by. And Bubba had his moments too, but for the most part, I think he was just bitter, you know, putting up a new group of new guys. And, and I remember when we won the titles in Winnipeg, um, fucking uh, Pat Patterson. No, 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 it was Finley. Finley came up to, to Pete and I and we were like, oh, we just, I just saw the Dudley's camping outside of Vince's office for like 20 minutes. We're like, really? He goes, yeah. And I went up to them and I said, what are you guys doing? They said, nothing. And I said, you guys aren't here to change the match? And they were like, no. And so I told them, well, see you then. And they just kind of shrugged their shoulders and walked off. <laughs> and, and when Fit told us that, we just thought it was so funny. It was Fitz, like, Fit's all right, man. Yeah, he's all right. He's got, he's, just like, he's got his moments. Really? The Dullies are politics? <laughs> like, so that was one of my early introductions to politics. Just like guys that would camp outside of Vince's office and wait to schmooze them and tell them that they thought this was more productive than what, you know, it's just, it's disgusting. Um, and, uh, and Bubba eventually lightened up when he knew he had, you know, I'd probably fucking murder him if he fucking pushed me. And, and it was a time when I remember we were in Europe and uh, Rene was at ends there and he was kind of like just getting disillusioned with the whole place. He was like, God, is this what we worked for and everything and we were in Italy. Is that when he whipped his dick out? Yeah, it is. And I said, I think this is a fine dick even though it has an anteater <laughs> fucking tip on it. I don't think so. No, does he have one of those? I think he isn't. Yeah, we still uh, have an anteater dick. You know, I, yeah, I, I ain't uh, Jewish, but I got that shit yeah, clipped. Yeah, no, why not? Anyways, you know, we were talking, just, just bullshit on the beach, and being friends, and kind of being there for each other. We're talking about foreskin? For sure. And yeah. we came back to the locker room the next day, and I remember Bubba was sitting there with all the guys, and he was like, What'd you guys, I heard you guys had a nice stroll on the beach. Nice romantic walk on the beach. Yeah, just trying to stir shit. I was like, how old are you, really, man? Like, Come on, this is, this is the best you got? I got high school coaches. Fucking berated me and yelled at me and got to me and like, this fucking clown. And it was just like things like that, you know, where you try to make examples out of you and your fucking tag partner wouldn't stand up for you because he's a fucking puss. And, uh, but I just held my own. I was like, hey man, two friends walking, like, just didn't do anything. I was just like, hey, whatever. And eventually Taker was like, hey man, you handled yourself real well in there. I was like, what do you mean? The, the match? He was like, no, in the locker room, you know, guys trying to push you around and you held your own. That's good. Yeah, it's real good. Hey, it's boss. And so I started to kind of like get to feel like, oh, okay, this is how this kind of place works, you know, and 
it was what it was. But as far as the team with Kidman, and I recently did a show in the Northeast with his uh, nephew. Uh, Bats. Yeah, we Mikey helped Bats. him get hired. No bullshit. Mikey Bats. We got him hired. Good dude. We got him hired for the junior division. Because yeah. I thought he was a midget. The tour went, yeah. was super porky. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Octagon Cito and shit. But uh, he read one of my matches recently, and he was like, "Hey man, I heard you didn't, you weren't too, you didn't like Kidman, and you, Pete was thought you, were, you, you know." All that. And I was like, "Well, he was a dick. He, he he threw me under the bus, you know. He was a fucking. He wasn't there. He was he was more for me less than he was there for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you know, it is what it is. I don't have any feelings against him now. You know, I'm not the one that got caught banging some pig when I was dating Tori. You know, whatever. <laughs> it's not my issue." None of it is. Whatever. I just go where my dick leads me. <laughs> that was just, that's no good either, man. Oh, oh shit! Yeah. No, no I, don't. I don't have a dick. I'm cut it off, actually. Yeah. I'm like a Ken doll. You no, know, that's a good idea. I have a stub. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. I, I have a stub. I actually do. When a girl wants to get fucked, I attach one. It's kind of like a rocket cock. This motherfucker. We, yeah, <laughs> hey, let's go put matches together. We go downstairs. This motherfucker is hanging out with the girls for 45 minutes straight. That's not good See girls. which one of these he can fuck. What? Come on. I might say, well. No. Yeah, but he was Most with the girls for 45 minutes straight. They're easy. <laughs> nice girl. Everybody's nice here. Yeah. Except the ones that take steroids. They have very big clits. It's disgusting. Is that so bad? I don't know. I think you work with them, with some of them now. Big clits. Some of the big clits. <laughs> yeah, I think you work with the big clit clit. Big clits. The BCC. <laughs> what do you got for us? Big clits. Besides big clits. Uh, Paul, reference to what you're doing now. Uh, experiences at TNA so far? I gotta take another piss. Before. Go Sorry. for it. I'll talk about big, TNA big clit talk while you're peeing. What was the question? Uh, experiences TNA? at TNA so far. Talk about TNA. Uh, honestly, it, it's it's been great, man. Um, I did my first week there. Um, I had a, a you know three month sort of deal, and uh, you know I, I I worked on the pay per view. I was very satisfied with it, but then they did uh, four weeks of tapings, and I was on one out of the four, and I complained about it, and you know it was it shit got explained to me that you're gonna be on the on. Uh, on the next two pay-per-views and blah blah blah. Um, what I like about them, uh, Terry's been real honest with me. I get to work, um, even if I don't get the professional satisfaction, let's say, from working a, a three-minute match on a um, on an impact. Well, fuck, on uh, February 27th, I get to work Lee Valiant for as long as I want. For in the exact style of match that I want, that he wants, I um the the difference between working there and anywhere, I, well, well, not anywhere, but WWE, is that uh, I'm there for a week, and then if if that doesn't satisfy me, I can go to PWG, I can go to ROH, I can go to Dragon Gate, and um, I can get what I want out of wrestling. What is it that you want out of wrestling? <sighs> what I what I really like to do is I really, really, really like to take the X division, which is just seen as um, car crash guys. With with my first match at TNA, not first match, but my first match back, I I, I worked right on the pay per view, and we had an agent who came up to us and said, "Okay, guys." Video game car crash. And I said, I'm, I'm not a video game wrestler. Oh, well, I, I'm not talking about you. Well, of course you're talking about me. You're talking about both of us. But I was able to wrestle the style that I wanted. And every week, I've been able to put my foot down, and they've accepted it. And I, not accepted, but I, I've been able to put my word in. They put their two cents in, and we go back and forth. But, but I feel like I get more out of wrestling here in TNA, uh, uh, perspective-wise, what I want out of it than I did before. That's the difference, yeah. Paul, what do you want out of wrestling? Lavish pussies. Vaginas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
know, I, uh, we're trying to open up a school in LA. Yeah, we've been trying we to, you know, I feel like a lot of things get lost like, fundamentally as far as like just different things. It would be a neat project to try and open a school and see what could come of it, you know, and see what, what kids are really committed to trying to commit their lives, or at least that first part of their lives to, to get into wrestling. Something like that would be interesting. Um, I don't know, as far as wrestling, it, it, it's weird, you know, because when I got into wrestling, there were so many challenges that I set up for myself, and I feel like I kind of accomplished most of them mm -hmm. as far as just, like, getting WWE. Was just How like, easy was that? I remember we talked about that. Yeah, I mean, it was easier than I foresaw. Peculiarly easy. It was just, it was just, easy. just this nonstop attitude of, yeah. like, this, this isn't going to stop till we get there, you know? And, and so, you know, within three years, we were there. But, um... I don't know, man. Like, you know, I'm a monkey in the sense that I was born in that year, Chinese year of the monkey. And I'm I get a lamb. So I get, I I'm get a sheep. Do you, are you? I'm a sheep. I, you know, know I, just, I, I get bored easily. And, and I like to have all sorts of challenges. And so with wrestling, it's not that the challenge is gone, but it is to an extent. It's like I got to WWE and I, nobody thought I would ever. Not even my own family. And, and I did better than most people probably thought I was ever going to make. And so I'm happy with what I've done. If I never wrestle another match, I'll be fine. Um, it's, it's more about self-discovery now and finding what, what can I grow from. And I just feel like the ability to grow in wrestling is quite limited for me right now. Um, there's just so much that I'm just not interested in anymore, you know? It's, once you've had a hamburger every day for 365 days in a row, you're kind of looking for something else to eat. You know, so, you know, I'm taking my hand to something else and going after a second dream. And uh, to me, it's a lot more challenging and, and we'll see. But I, I think that your life should be about growth and prosperity and about, kind of, you know, trying to continue a, um, elevation, you know, just seeking that enlightenment, I guess, if that's what the journey is. But just trying to, to develop my awareness as broad as possible and just trying to... I guess get to that path of enlightenment, but I feel like I had one dream down, and, and now it's on to another one. Really, you you, you fucking done did it, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. No, I, I never Paul, set out Paul, to be a world that, champion. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm with you. And so I'm kind of looking to move on to something else. So I'm very fortunate to have wrestling because it, it pays for my bills and, and it's afforded me a tremendous amount of opportunities. I made a million friends. It feels like even though I don't keep in touch with any of them except this guy. And, uh, and you know what, though? That's not true. Yeah, I mean, I you know what, though? There's, there's nothing wrong with that. The way wrestling yeah. works, uh, it's just the way it works. It, you, there's there's Let's keep in touch, man. You're best friends with eight years ago. Eight years later, you see him, and it's just like old times. Yeah. It really, it, wrestling's very odd like that. I haven't spoken to yeah. Jimmy Yang in probably over a year and a half. Yeah, but, but when I you see him, you'll give him a big fucking... Him. A super hug. You know you right that one too. Yeah, we hit too. right off again. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And we'll be tax sisters together. He'd, but he'd get us in jail by the end of the night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He'd probably be a fucking hillbilly that came in. Hillbilly slope. K-Fabe slope. That's it. Yeah, K-Fabe slope. Um, talk about bad breath. You know, Regal would fucking kill me about that. Regal would pull Brian aside one time specifically to tell him. I would ride with him. And, and, and Regal breath. and I are boys, but Jimmy and I were buddies, and... Regal oh. knew that, so he knew that he could tell Brian, like, his fucking breath. And Regal it's would... It's fucking unbearable. And Regal would talk it. about his hey. own breath, because he'd take garlic pills. <laughs> I know my breath's bad, but this guy's fucking breath. It's a hygiene thing, I just don't understand it. I never it's smelled it. I never smelled I it. I did. Uh, I'm sure it's uh, Jimmy dipped it. It's, uh, it's yeah. kimchi. Oh, dipped? Yeah, he dipped it. Oh, I, I mooched up many a dips <laughs> off of Jimmy. <laughs> I've never dipped. I have. I've done it all. It's shameful. You know, I think we have a lot of I've pride. Stooped. We take a lot of pride in a lot With of things, goop. though, too. You know, like, something a lot of people may not take knowledge of is that, you know, neither of us have ever once ever taken any form of a steroid. Ever. The one promise I made to my mom before I went to wrestling, she said, please don't take any steroids. You got it, Mom. Simple as that. That's it. I haven't done it. You know, I never once considered uh, it. Surprise, surprise, yeah. Yeah, yeah but and then just you know, some people go certain paths and guys go other paths, and 
I think, you know, I, I can't speak for Brian, but I know that, like, I did enough research as I was getting into wrestling, trying to absorb as much as possible. I saw how many pitfalls guys fell into. Baseball slide. Oh, yeah. Trap. Or just, I mean, all sorts of things. And then when I got into wrestling, I started to see guys was. abuse it. I could see how, you know, how just ineffective they were. Like, I remember uh, Carlito, he gassed up real bad one time and then took a, like, a hair beal. Like a bitch beal from from uh, Bob Holly one time and tore his whole peck and all this shit and it was like just because he was pumped pump, puffed up and you know it's just like what's the benefit for me? It was like no. I got this far without it. Why do I need it now? There, there's zero benefit to it. And so that was something. That was another thing I took a lot of pride in. At it least ecstasy makes you feel good. You know what I mean? Oh. You can take other drugs to make it like, hey, this yeah. is a good time, man. Yeah, yeah. Acid creates synapses. Yeah, or I can take this and tear my muscles. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Yeah, and so, like you fun. know, it just never seemed any point to do steroids. Just, why bother? We got this far without them. Why mm -hmm. start now? So, and the fact that we never, ever, ever did. I don't even think I could possibly ever inject myself. You know, needles make me laugh. Mm -hmm. like, they tickle, but I, don't, I just never, mm -hmm. could never do that to my. I don't think I would miss the vein. I don't even know how the fuck that would work. No, <laughs> don't do it. You know what I mean? I just wouldn't bother. Plus, there's a tremendous amount of life after wrestling, you know, in my opinion. And I see too many guys in wheelchairs and dying young and all this bullshit. And so, you know, if you really care about a career in wrestling, then you know, take the necessary precautions. And if that matters to you, you'll, you'll do your homework. and. Eat your vitamins, say your prayers. Say your prayers, drink your, drink your, uh, milk, milk or whatever, or whatever the fuck it is. Milk. Yeah. It'll be all right. Yeah. Vince McMahon. What about him? Uh, next up. Memories, initial impressions, how he changed over time. Just impressions overall. Oh, shit. I mean, my interaction with him was very limited. Um, um, you know, there, there was times where I'd have to fucking go wait and talk to him, and he... Gave me the time, I had to fucking take it, but he gave it to me, and uh, ultimately he's the fucking boss, man. I'm just a pawn. Yeah, it sucks. I mean, he's the ultimate, he's the voice, you know, and it's like nobody dares cross this guy who doesn't seem to have a really good grasp on his audience. He's pretty, you know, he's stuck in time. He doesn't, he's very close minded, not really willing to collaborate with anybody except his like little group. Um, I never, in all my dealings with him, I never once felt that he was interested in the fact that I was even standing in front of him. Like, it just, it was just a waste of time. Mm. Um, the one time that I can remember thinking like, hmm, does this guy not hate me right now? Or is this guy not, like, is he trying to lighten up to me? Or, like, was when I had my beard. And we were sitting, in, we were in Gorilla because we were the opening match on Raw. And, uh, and so we're sitting there in the Gorilla waiting for, you know, Pyro's going off and all that stuff. And he's coming to sit down in Gorilla's, put his headphones on and all that stuff. And he comes up to me. I think Brian was at the bottom of the stairs warming up or something. And, uh, because we had a couple seconds. Yeah, and, uh, so he comes up, he's walking past me. And he's like, hey, I like the beard. What's with your partner? And I was like, I don't think he's got any beard uh, yet. I can't grow him. Yeah, beard. and he was like, <laughs> like he's just phony. Oh, I try to remember your <laughs> names. Yeah, I was like, oh, thanks, oh, great one for giving me your your time of day. It was like, oh, yeah, yeah, it'll I, be twice as healthy next week. I yeah. bow down to no man, and I don't, I don't fear any fucking human being. You know, it's just like he's just another fucking guy. And I think I just got really disgusted by seeing all these people just lay down and and give up all their power to this this guy who was just uh, a rotten person. He just seemed like a nasty human being. And he's been real successful, man. I mean, and he created something that I love. Yeah. You know, he really did. And and, and um, for me to think like, oh, Ultimate Warrior, and like this motherfucker is twice the size that I am. <laughs> And that's what made me want to be a wrestler. You know, when I was delusional, fuck it, I'll be I'll be just as intense. And you know, I got as far as I did and and fuck, I mean I'm I'm happy I did. You know, um I I I don't want to spend another day in WWE. And that that's the truth and and I, I, there's no dollar amount for for my happiness. I've done it before for 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 
dirt cheap and I'm not going to do it again for any amount of money. But uh, I'm not going to say I was, you know, it's it's all his fault. No, man. I mean, I mean, I, you know, I knew I was smoking weed, you know, but I tried to fight it. Um, you know, I knew I was a pain in the ass. I knew I fucking stuck up for myself, but I didn't give a shit, you know. Um, and I was going to stick up for myself till I got fired. And they got me. I got fired, you know. Um, I don't regret it. Um, I was, uh, I was shocked. I was, I was upset. Um, it was hard to explain to my wife, but, uh, but fuck, man, I'm glad it's done. And, uh, and I ain't going back, man. I'd, I'd rather go work at Home Depot or fucking anywhere. Man. Really? You don't want to join the Kiss My Ass Club? You for the Kiss Your Ass Club? <laughs> yeah. It's oil and water. What split the team up between you guys? Uh, there were a lot of rumors at the time that, that Brian, you wanted to go single. Mm -hmm. Did you want to address that at all, or what split the team up? Well, they, they, what, what ultimately did it for me was uh, was the meeting with Shane, and we've been going nowhere. Um, and and uh, and after that, we we knew we were we were fucked. Um, it's like spinning wheels. Man. It was spinning wheels. Yeah, there's there's no way like there wasn't there wasn't. Um, there wasn't anywhere for us to go. Um, I uh, I'm proud of what we did. Um, I think I think um, Paul compliments me. I compliment him. I think uh, I think we're, um, we're we're perfect for each other in that respect. Um, and they just they don't like tag teams or whatever the fuck. But they sure don't like um, guys that aren't. What they want to be, and that's what it is. Marionettes that can walk on their own mm. don't belong in the land of we were entertaining, because it's just they they want to control everything. I mean, it's like Rumple Stiltskin, man. He has to have first dibs on everything you do. I mean, it's right on top of you. They control everything. We couldn't be the hooligans. Ah, oh, we tried forever to get forever. this name. Forever, we had this shit on our gear. We couldn't be the hooligans it's because. Like, oh, I don't want. Uh, you don't need a tag team. Why do you guys need a tag team name? That way, when we split you up, we'll be able to just keep you guys as yeah, is. Yeah, nobody so. know who you are if you were the hooligans when we split you up. Well, nobody knows who the fuck we are now, man. You don't know who the fuck we are now. Um, it's just a bunch of lip service, you know? It's just... What can you do? Mm -hmm. So just do the best with what you have control over, which is very little. Mm -hmm. Turn your power over to a company like that. I and mean, fascist like him, who just doesn't want to listen to anybody mm. and anybody that disagrees with them or tries to offer an alternate opinion is fired or you know in the doghouse it's just like mm. that match we had against the Bucks man I was so happy about yeah that was cool. real happy yeah, about it yeah yeah. yeah um yeah I mean it was sour though it was like just at least it could have done something you know like this the split but just didn't care but they didn't give a fuck you mentioned the match you just had with the Young Bucks mm -hmm. Compare and contrast wrestling at WWE with wrestling at, say, Pro Wrestling Gorilla. I was in shape when I wrestled at WWE. <laughs> I wasn't really in shape. <laughs> the, 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 the difference was, like, like with the, um, with the Bucks. You know, we have a little bit of a, a promo bullshit, blah, blah, blah. We have our match. And we have some stuff, and I don't like to have a lot of, like, this, this, then this. Just, we'll do this until that. Um... And we were gonna wrestle around, and I saw them fucking smiling like jerk offs on the uh, apron, and fuck it, I'm just gonna beat their ass, and it just turned into a brawl. And for for kids that are 20 and 23, 24, I don't know, they're young though. Um, and we didn't tell them, we just fucking got on them, and they they flipped the script like we wanted them to. That's fucking that's nice, and you you can't do that when you've got five minutes we've got a show to produce this isn't about you it's about our show which it is about their show but but in the indies we can fucking do our match and fuck it's it's just so much more satisfying it, i i really i was really happy afterwards for sure whereas like on the you know the entertainers it's like well we've got this supporting cast but it's really about this essential star piece right here Whereas in the independents, it's like, well, we're proud of all these guys. Let's just go out there and give the best show from top to bottom. 
and make sure the fans are happy. Whereas I think the entertainers like to claim, like, let's make the fans happy. But in truth, it's like, well, let's make as much money as we can. And I get that philosophy, it's a business, but I, I, think, I just think that they don't know their audience as well as they think they know their audience. And I think that, you know, I believe that most of their ideas that they try to come up with creatively are, are you know, like, maybe four months too old. I mean, it's just so, I mean, if you look at the entertainers, I mean, they really are a black eye in the entertainment business as far as like Hollywood and stuff and they're kind of like a bastard child like, like Vince wants so hard to get into Hollywood but Hollywood is kind of like, you know they just kind of laugh at it you know it's but he's doing pretty good for for what was a circus act true true, true. I mean, I mean, I mean I he's mean, trying to get his he's, just, he's in the business to create stars like nobody, nobody's done with wrestling what he's done with wrestling he's sure. trying to legitimize it sure what, hey, hey, is it still goofy? Are the movies bad? Uh, the, uh, are there guys in the movies that I like uh, that I can't even fucking watch? Sure, yeah, yeah, they're bad movies. But yeah, I mean, he's... he's fuck, he's trying. Um, he might think we're cocksuckers, and we might think he's a cocksucker, but... I'll be happier when he's dead. <laughs> I'll say that. He dies, I think there'll be rainbows all over the place. Lucky charms falling in our hands. <laughs> Have you had chocolate Lucky Charms? Really? What's your favorite cereal of all time? Oh, fuck, man. I don't know. Have you ever had Ninja Turtle cereal? Do you remember that? Probably. Uh, I think so. Does anybody remember that? Remember. Okay, with, with the frosted nets uh, and the... Okay, okay. Oh, I don't know. Best cereal of all time. Really? Yeah. I like Cookie Crisp, but that's kind of... Imagine, imagine checks that were frosted and then add marshmallows. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, that's Ninja Turtle Should cereal. Be. I like Cinnamon Toast. Oh, Cinnamon Toast Old Crunch. Graham. Yeah. And they make, uh, with like a third less sugar versions now, but... Mm, I don't need cereal too much anymore. <laughs> I love it. You don't drink milk. My metabolism is not the way it used to be. <laughs> He's not a milk drinker. Not too much. Unless it's out of a teat. Huh? Isn't that more interesting than... Uh, yeah, yeah. Milk. He's not a milk drinker. I might drink tip milk if it was presented. <laughs> Renee oh, Dupree, sure. a friend of mine, used to <gasps> milk himself. Yeah. I should swim thing. Yeah. I don't see what kind of substances were in his body, but they were creating milk. Producing lactated. <laughs> I don't know. I don't inject myself with things, but you know he used to have gap teeth until he oh, wrestled yeah. in Cincinnati. Yeah. And then him and I wrestled a match where he had to call in the ring, I love and him. I moved in the corner, and he took the pole and busted his teeth. Oh. And now he's got perfect, perfect teeth. teeth. He's got fine. two brand new teeth. So all you French Tickler fans out Renee there, Dupree. you have this man to thank for the perfect teeth that French Tickler had. Like, like a gap, like, as wide as my pinky. Renee's awesome. He's, he, he's Renee was another one of my really yeah, good like friends him, who yeah. I rode with for a long time. And you was, puked in his bathtub. Oh my You're god, nice. yeah. I ruined his bathtub at WrestleMania one time. I, I had all these sweet potato <laughs> french fries. We were doing the video game challenge at WrestleMania. They were like, oh, we need some, uh, we'll put London in there. And I was like, oh, cool. And I made it to the semis and I beat all these top stars that they were like oh. and uh, and then uh, I think I lost to Shelton who's just like a big video game nerd yeah. and um, and so they took us up to the restaurant I think it was a house of blues in Chicago and it was like oh open bars all right just like steak and all this sweet potato fries and like I ended up throwing up in Renee's bathtub and he must have I mean Honestly, like a foot, like up to this beer box, <laughs> just a layer in his bathtub of orange, like film. I don't even. I, he was taking video of me. And I was like flexing and like throwing up at the same time, and laughing. It was retarded. Is that where we got the three pack? But he had to switch his room all together because he couldn't drain his bathtub. It was like too clogged. Did we get the three pack in Chicago the with Jimmy? The three pack. I don't know the three pack. The three pack action figures with Jimmy Yang. Oh, I don't For know. Smoking out. Maybe. I don't yeah. remember. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. anyways. What do you got next? I forget a lot. We still haven't found any weed? <laughs> uh, what is this? Well, you just mentioned Randy Dupree. Anyone else that we, a name we haven't mentioned yet that really made a big impression on you or, or that you had a, a lot of good times with that we just haven't mentioned yet? My father. Um, mm, yeah. No, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, Jimmy Yang. Uh, 
Super crazy. Super crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, I mean, I was even friends with Carlito for a little bit before he became a superstar in his own mind. And so, you know, at OVW, people in OVW are like a certain kind of friends. And then, like, once people get moved up to TV, they either stay the same or change completely. It's where you don't recognize them or you don't want to recognize them anymore. And you're just like, nah, I used to know that guy, but I'm kind of glad I don't anymore. Um, that's just the atmosphere that it creates. But Look, I, I mean, I, I, um, I realize I'm a piece of shit in some ways. Everybody is. So, um, I'm not. oh, sure, we all are. Yeah, and so, <laughs> and so, you know, I, I try to accept them all. Um, so yeah, I like everybody for the most part. Um, it's a cast of characters, man. Yeah, I don't know what to say other than uh, Santino's the fucking uh -huh. funniest motherfucker Santino's on the entire hilarious. planet. I've been trying to get him in movies, man, with yeah. with my buddy Brad. Was porn? Oh uh, no, no, no. Oh. He's the funniest motherfucker on the planet. Other than that, I mean, really. Santino is hilarious. Yeah, humans are humans. You get along with them, you know, unless you're a dick. Santino though is the funniest motherfucker on the planet. Yeah. I think there's a lot. That I know. There's, I'm sure yeah. there is. I'm sure there's funnier. You know? <laughs> no, he's really I'm sure. Funny. I'm sure Bill Cosby's funnier, but not to me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck. That goofy Canadian prick. He likes pudding. <laughs> Bill Cosby. Yeah, yeah, he does. They both love pudding. Hey, that imagine. magic pen. I always wanted to write with that thing. Where that magic? Was that magic? Uh, what was that show he had? Bill Cosby? The Cosby uh, show? Picture page. Mm. Remember that shit? He'd write that magic pen. Was like, you remember when Santino fucked up on the uh, the pull the rope back oh, drop yeah. me over? Oh, oh, and I wanted to yeah. kill him, but I like him too much. Like Santino's a guy you love. You love the guy. He's a great guy. I mean, even no matter how lousy he might be in the ring, you know, but he knows he's not like oh, spectacular. The, the fuck, I love him to death. I I, I want to wrestle him every day. Yeah. What do you got for us? Uh, how did the Brian Kendrick come about on SmackDown? I'll take a quick pitch break. Don't Please take do. a pitch break. Okay. Um, well, I, I, um, you know, I pitched my shit to the boss. Um, then it, it, it came time to debut it. Um, I had brand new gear, and I had my old gear. I went to, uh, Michael Hayes. Um, I had my promo written up, written up, but, you know, memorized. Here's what I want to say. He had his own promo for me. Uh, I wanted to use my new gear. He said, well, we want to break you into it. Um, I said, well, let me put on my gear. I went and I put on my gear. I came back. Luckily, Hunter was in the room when I came back. And I had my, the jacket my wife made, my, my brand new gear, and Hunter popped for it. And so Hay said, well, fuck, nah, asked Vince. So went to Vince and Vince goes, well, what the fuck do I care? So that was an okay for me. Um, I went to Hayes, he said the gear's good. Um, uh, I had my promo, he didn't like my promo, he rearranged it. I went to the boss, I gave the promo that Michael Hayes gave me, he shit on it. And uh, he goes, you write that? I said, no, you know, I have my own promo, but this is, Hayes helped me out. Well, give me your promo. I gave my promo and he goes, that's perfect. But from now on, you're the Brian Kendrick. So as far as like the character, everything else, I guess I can take credit for myself. I don't know, but, but the was, was Vince's idea. Ultimately that he, I cut my promo, you're the Brian Kendrick. So. And, and I do love it. I thought it was cool. Um, he owns it now. It's gone. But yeah, that was his idea. Uh, how did the, the partnership with Ezekiel Jackson come about? When I pitched the idea, um, my argument was, what, what happened was I was working a singles match. We're on different rosters now, Paul and I are. I'm working a match against um, Dolph Ziggler, and I think he's really talented. And um, Rob Terry, I'm not sure what his name was then, but he's in TNA now as Rob Terry, was his valet. We have a heat spot, I'm in the corner, I give Ziggler the boot, 
The ref goes with Ziggler. Rob Terry pulls my foot. He doesn't pull my foot. I'm waiting. He doesn't pull my foot. I'm waiting. I come out. I clothesline Ziggler. I look at Terry, and he's, like, posing to the crowd. I'm fucking livid. I get on him. The referee says, change the finish. We put Ziggler over. But as we're putting him over, the ref says, kick out. We change it again. So after the match, I'm so fucking pissed. I go through Gorilla. I shoulder tackle Ricky Steamboat, who I love, man. I love Ricky Steamboat. Unintentional. I'm ready to fucking quit. Um... I go outside, I'm screaming, I got, a, I got a temper problem, that's, yeah, whatever. Um, I come back, Arn Anderson pulls me aside, starts trying to calm me down. No, fuck this, fuck that, I'm pissed off. You know, if I can do this shit with this cocksucker, what can I do with Hunter? Um, he says, okay, well, we'll talk with Michael Hayes. Michael Hayes pulls me aside, tries to calm me down. Well, you know, this, that, and the other. No, motherfucker, you're the one who made me put Deuce over. You're the motherfucker who made me wrestle three-minute matches against cocksuckers. You're the one who made me wrestle Gemini and put him over. So I was livid, man. Johnny Ace pulls me aside. We're going to talk to Vince. We're going to talk to Vince. Okay, we're going to wait outside his office. Johnny Ace sees me waiting outside of Vince's office and walks away disappears so I'm stuck there by myself and when he came can I talk to you sure in a minute he does his shit comes back out opens up the door what do you want to say and I fucking spill my guts man I'm ready to quit if I can make this piece of shit look good how can I make your top guys look if I can make this piece of garbage look how can I make Shawn Michaels Umaga Triple H look and he was with me but then ultimately, um, I didn't satisfy what he wanted. You know, um, I, I, you know, I, I, I pushed for what I wanted, and uh, Johnny said he liked it. Oh, you know, I was doing great. I was doing great. I was doing great. I got fired, and ultimately, I just didn't get it. Fuck that skateboard, faggot. And you know, I fucking, I, 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 I bitched and planned this, and it made Jerry Lawler look like he knew how to wrestle still. Well, yeah, well, I can help you get to Japan. Johnny, I don't need your fucking help getting to Japan. But it's just, he's got a job to do. I got a job to do. It's, it's a, it's a company. I could outskate that motherfucker easily. I could already eat pizza. You remember when Mark Henry called me out for getting hurt from skateboarding? Did he? Uh, I, I, I tried skateboarding for the first time at like 27, like a schmuck. I hurt myself. I had to wrap myself up, and uh, I hurt myself training. I don't think you did. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, Mark Henry kind of on to me. Anyways. Really? Yeah. I like him. It takes he an injury-prone guy to know what an injury is. He threw my bachelor party. Really? When I, when I was on the road and I was going to get married, he went around and got everybody and threw it. You know what? They did it was, it was like pasties. And it, like, so I didn't even see nipples. But still, Mark had yeah. my bachelor party. Yeah, yeah. Apparently Zeke bought me a dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was Apparently Mark Henry would like read full layout porn like Hustler and shit on an airplane. Like it would pack the airplane. It would just be like... Yeah. A fellow master. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I like Mark. I do too, man. I really do. I really yeah, do. He's basketball. And, he, and he's a barbecue fan. He is. What's his favorite? He's a Longhorn. Uh, Rudy's? He just decks his long horn. No, what was the commercial? Oh, Rudy's? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bar yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. he's a barbecue spokesman. Yeah. How do you guys Wait, think but... Brian Danielson will do there? Who? I'm going to give you a real... You mean Dan O'Brien? I'm going to give you a story before I take so a piss. Um, they, they stuck me with an angle um, where I had to cut a promo. I'm going to bring in my new tag team partner. When I went to go cut the promo, they cut the mic on me. And I was fucking no pissed, yeah. So I had no promo. I'm yelling shit and screaming at Jerry Lawler and Jim Ross, and, and they're looking at me and doing this. And I'm fucking livid. So, uh, you know, I pull the writers aside. Um, so you get to do it next week. I'm going to bring in the perfect tag team partner. At this point, I already talked to him. 
Brian Danielson. That's who I'm bringing in. Brian Danielson's going to be my tag team partner. To the, to the writers, they love it. But Johnny Ace is saying, well, yeah, we'll bring him in, but you got to talk to Brian the writer. Brian the writer is as far away as you are from I. Now, I go and talk to Brian and say, hey, can we bring him in to San Jose? Sure, just talk to, a to, to Johnny. I go over to Johnny. They fucking disappeared. This motherfucker was supposed to be my goddamn tag team partner, and these cocksuckers were too sh chicken shit to talk to each other. <laughs> Well, it's a coward, man. It's a bunch of cowards. <laughs> Brian Danielson's, he's amazing, man. He's awesome. I think he's, well, I don't know if he'll do good, but he's a good, he's a smart guy. He's a good minded guy. He's a positive guy. So I don't, I think he's giving himself he's all the reason guy. and all the abilities to be really successful there. And I hope he does, you know. I mean, pretty much done everything else. Um, and I know just in talking with him that he's like, I never want to go to TNA. It's so bad. <laughs> you know, so I told him, I said, don't ever take what we say as, you know, how it is. You should go and judge it for yourself and do the best you can and try to leave your mark, you know, because he's that good that he should be able to leave his mark. So only time will tell if he can endure the cocksuckability of the entertainers. Tell us about the hybrid dolphins. Oh, God. Uh, uh, you know, it's it, that's, it's a fun thing with PWG. Is it, it, it to me? It's like a real outlet to uh, just kind of be like, ah, do whatever. You know, there's no limit on it. So it's a real refreshing, you know, atmosphere for me, coming from extreme limitations to no limitations. And I think they were receptive because when I came back, uh, I think it, almost a year ago to the Indies, um, it was like, ex what was it, Express, uh, Written Consent or something, what, something like that, right? Yeah. Um, and, uh, and they were just so, it was so nice and genuinely, I thought this the last oh, I'm yeah. sorry, mine broke, but I found this one in the bathroom, so <laughs> you really, this one might have been yours. Right? Yeah, it probably is, because I picked at it. But you were saying earlier, like, how does it feel to be a guy that the company's restructuring, you know, they're focusing on you, and it's like, well, it never felt that way, but what they did with PWG, and it was, so it was really refreshing to go from, oh, you're bottom of the, you know, bottom feeder, I don't really care about you, to like, hey, thanks Stroke for being my here. Ego, oh, yeah. wow, it's so nice. It's just to feel appreciative, and, I mean, it's, it's an emotional thing when you put everything you have into it, and the fans respond. So... You know, just being able to work with no limitations is really refreshing, especially with, you know, PWG, because they're, they're always willing to push shit and do weird, outrageous shit. It's, just, it's a unique company. I think that's what I dig about it. And so that just turned, that just happened to be, you know, that day I'd been at the beach and I, I actually had some pizza. I was in Malibu. Uh, you talking about when we worked the box? You no, know, he's asking about how the hybrid dolphin thing came out. Oh, 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 okay. And so, um, I was having some pizza from Demores in Malibu, and I was sitting at this spot that I like to chill out at all the time. I get to watch uh, dolphins mingle and um, animals and different sea sea mammals play. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, you know, every day is just kind of a new day of discovery. You just kind of see what it brings. And I try not to think too far in advance in my life because I feel that when you make so many plans. It's like planning out your wrestling match. It's like, well, if something goes haywire, it might throw off your whole string of events. And so I try not to think too far in advance. I like to just kind of enjoy the moments I'm in. And so I go to the beach a lot, you know, especially now that I live in LA. And uh, <laughs> I went to PWG that night after I hung out at the beach and just kind of meditated for a bit. And then I had a lousy match that I was really disappointed about. So I was just like, man, that was not good up to my standards. And I was ready to go home and they came and dragged me out of the parking lot and they said, we still need you to do this promo. I'm like, really? I don't know, I'm seeing all sorts of aliens and stuff now. Like, I don't know what was in the, what was in the atmosphere here in Los Angeles, but it smells like Christmas. And, uh, but I love it. And, um,
said, oh, well, you and Brian are going to do this tag team thing. I was like, I have no idea. And being an expert at improv, I was just like, what do you want to just do? Yeah, well, right, let's go with it. And uh, we had this tag match set up with Brian and Scott Lawson. At the point, I thought I was going to be able to work the match. Turned out not to be. But anyways, we just had fun. And just wrapped about all the intergalactic gifts that are given to us on a daily basis. And Brian was quite the improv -y. Responded quite well, and I didn't even know they put the promo up. Now, like, oh, your promo's up, and it's already got like all these hits on YouTube. I was like, what promo? The dolphin one. They loved it. I was like, really? I didn't even remember that. And I just, I don't know. It's weird. The weirdest shit it takes off sometimes. But I do love uh, the Island of Dr. Moreau. It's a great film. Yeah. You know, Any parting thoughts? Uh, this is yet hey, to come. Yeah, thanks for everything. I mean, it's been a real slice. Yeah. This is just, uh... Any party questions? I mean, wow. this is, uh... Yeah. And, 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 and looking by the clock, like, zero minutes have gone by. It's still 11.50. Well, we're in a time war. It's all in your head. We might even be in a warm... Dude, world. and we didn't even get into what I wanted to talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. still yeah. time. I mean, this is a, this is a wormhole. Mm. <laughs> I think we could just talk all night about all sorts of nonsense. Yeah, it was all we got here, yeah. That's true. Imagine what we could do with something this color. I asked earlier, but we'll close with this. Sum up your experiences in wrestling in, in one or two lines. One or two oh, times. so you're asking if 9-11 was a work. <laughs> That's what you wanted to talk about. Yeah, yeah, no, I, what I, I, asked all. No, 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 what, what, what I think is that it was holograms. They, you know, they use, they use the, the, you know, no black boxes. And then you got Jesse Ventura, who's on TV. Oh, well, you know, the black boxes, you know, uh, blah, blah, blah. It's, 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 it's misinformation. Holograms. Richard C. Hoagland, look at him. Holograms. Boom! I'm going to crash into this building right here. And it's going to take two hours. And this part will fall at the same time this part falls. Man, it was fucking holograms. Thank you for asking. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm. Holograms. <laughs> I agree. Thank you. Richard C. Hoagland.